Welcome back to Numbers on the Board. Numbers on the Board, yes! Give me some skin, my friend. Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> you we here, baby. Y'all That's stay all over there. They dry. I don't want to handshake him. You seen his hands. He do got his fingers, too. Hands. They be sweaty. I'm, I'm Once the episode, he bring up his handshakes, though. <laughs> <laughs> they all, but y'all do do y'all a little morning kiss before the rest of us get here. <laughs> <laughs> Leave a like on the episode. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Uh, it's still seeing that about 70% of the viewers here are not subscribed. Hey, so what that's about? People just be forgetting. We no, pop up in a recommended. No, I, I'll be honest with you. I, there are YouTube channels that I watch very regularly that I didn't notice I wasn't subscribed. I told you the same later. thing. Oh, no, I, I told you the same thing. You was like, you're a bad viewer. Yeah, you. That does. But make you know me what? Another. Viewer. You know but what? I'm another honest, thing I don't is forget. Too, I just don't do it. Sometimes <laughs> I watch a lot of my videos on my TV, and it's just not exi- For really sure. it's yeah. accessible to That's hit that subscribe great. button because it's just kind of going through like I'm videos. Not subscribed so. to Miss Rachel. Oh, you too. I, I don't Miss, even, Miss like, Rachel got the noties on for the new episodes. And like, I don't. I don't realize I'm not subscribed because when I open up YouTube, she's just there. But she's probably the only one that I watch regularly. That she don't care about subscribers. That's the greatest. That's, that's have 100 you ever seen Biffy? views? You saw the one I posted. Which it said seven hundred million views. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like, that is how insane. much money is seven hundred million? Have you ever no, seen how Biffy? many people are letting her raise their kid? Uh, at least, at least one. Because <laughs> Miss Rachel was on at our house every single day. Seven hundred million people are like, hey, I don't want no connection with you. <laughs> she's, about, she's about as safe as you can get for content-wise for kids, though. Shout yeah. out to Miss Rachel. Uh, you're yeah. welcome on the show anytime if you have a sports take, Miss Rachel. Subscribe, leave a like, go over to the audio platforms, give What's us five stars. Rachel, first name Miss. Uh, give us five <laughs> stars. It goes a very, very long way uh, <laughs> as we try to build out. the show to be number one. I actually saw a TikTok of her the other day where she wasn't in character. Really? And she was talking about how she feels guilty about her success. Why? Why does she Just because she's like she don't know if she deserve it, mm-hmm. and I understand. Rachel like, I understand that. So. You gonna out her? How how old do y'all think she is? Uh, uh, she's 32. like early forties. What thirty two? Early forty forty one. Forty one. Yeah. Oh wow! I remember Google. Can be stuff. She I was really we, young. we talked about this before. I mean, again, Miss Rachel was on every day in the house. So yeah. me and my. Kids recognize her in public. Yes, I saw another tick. Bro, oh. the algorithm is kind of crazy. <laughs> you see one Miss Rachel video, and now that's the whole feed. Um, but she is willing to go in character if you recognize her in public, which is kind of dope. Because I, I always wondered, can kids recognize this like, is so, faces it's, from it's TV? It's probably the voice, really, more than True. Anything. This is oh. so random. Miss, Miss Rachel sides with Kendrick amid the drink. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's you, why I knew she was a goat. Are you serious? <laughs> no, I'm not. Oh, I thought you was <laughs> I thought she was really tapped in with the rap beef. I was like, she really had a character now. Dude. Oh, yeah. She in the background cleaning the toilet. He was once a friend when I walked away. Easy. Oh, man. All right, we got a lot to get to on today's episode. We do. Because I, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you this, KB. Mm-hmm. And you smiling, but I'm so serious. Mm-hmm. And I don't even know if you was going to leave with this, but I am. I bet. I, I Yeah, I'm pretty sure I will. I saw some, something yesterday that... For the first time, pissed me off. I, I know. It, a it lot of people me the wrong way too. watch our show, and they think because I be having energy, I'm yelling and different things like that, that I be pissed off. But it's just like you know, for show and entertainment and a passion. Yeah. That shit though had me like hot for real, for real. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like John T. Porter. Are you shitting me? <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm not even laughing, no, bro. Like, I know. and it's... and I, I'll let I'll, you can go into the details because I don't want to go right in uh-huh. without people who may have been sleeping under a rock. But so, uh, Walsh, our, our good friend Walsh from ESPN, uh, put out a tweet about John Tay Porter being investigated for some sports betting stuff. And in the article, it said, in a game on January 26th against the Clippers, there were an increased betting interest on the under for John Tay Porter's props, which for the night were set at five. And <laughs> I'm sorry. I just think about, like, we've talked about this before. There are certain players that you should probably avoid betting on. If yes. somebody's prop is at five and a half, like you prop, just stay, just stay like away. Like Draymond please. Green. Just stay away. Yeah. Um, but it was five and a half points, four and a half rebounds, assist and a half. Uh, that was Draymond his over under. Draymond just caught a wicked stray. <laughs> <laughs> wicked. But, but I've, I've failed for the Draymond bait before. I have, sure. I have too. 
Uh, that evening, Jonte Porter played just four minutes before leaving the game because of what the Raptors said was an aggravation of an eye injury that he suffered four days earlier against the Memphis Grizzlies. Porter did not score against the Clippers and had three rebounds, one assist, and did not attempt the three, meaning that all of his underprops hit. The next day, as a part of the daily report for users on uh, betting results, a uh, sportsbook stated that the under on Jonte Porter's threes was the biggest money winner for betters of the NBA props for that evening. Uh, at least one other sportsbook detected unusual betting interest on Porter's props in the game in question. Sportsbook industry sources told ESPN that multiple betting accounts attempted to bet large amounts, upwards of 10000 to 20000 on Jonte Porter's under in a game in a January game versus the Clippers. The betting limit on the player prop on many sportsbook is between 1000 and 2000 So they tried the 10x the amount that they put in on Jonte Porter. And it's not just one account. Yeah. So a lot of people are speculating that he's got like a group chat. <laughs> oh, Jonte Porter, before making it to the league, had did an appearance in 2021. We talked about day trading. He talked about cryptocurrency. He had his own Discord about it. Too. So he's big into getting some money and flipping it. Uh, and people are speculating that part of maybe that Discord or a group chat saying, hey, guys, I'm going to say that I have an illness. Today's the under day. And you know what's crazy? He's one of those dudes that he's just not that guy, right? So, like, he should know realistically that that can probably be flagged if it's if it looks too suspicious. Mm -hmm. No one's hammering the, the Jante Porter <laughs> under. Yes. So, like, he should have known that what he was doing was going to look a little fishy. Uh, these Ben companies do not want to lose money. Mm -hmm. And they will they, – they are, like, so tight Nick with that shit. So, like – for him to go out there and do that with his name attached to it, it's kind of it's kind of crazy. If oh, go ahead. I also found out that every team has their own, uh, every NBA team has their own team that looks into this type of stuff, and then the NBA has a bigger team that does this on a regular basis to try to make sure there's no tomfoolery going on. And Jonte is just the first one to get caught uh, amongst or amidst of all of this like betting integrations that we see in sports. If all of the, if if everything is true. Because they do have to investigate and mm -hmm. everything. Jonte Porter is a damn fool. He's a damn fool. The reason Jonte Porter is a damn fool is because, like you just said, and like KB just said, anybody with any type of sense understands that betting, it is first and foremost a business. Yes. This is a major operation from everybody who is running these sites and casino. Whatever. It is a business. You're also in a business of the NBA, which to think you can just loosey goosey randomly put twenty thousand dollars on Jonte Porter, whether you was doing it yourself through your mama account, a cousin, a friend, and a group chat, you have to be a damn fool to think nobody is it's going to. Notice. Yes, that's just stupid. Mm -hmm. And then the, the the other part that is even more infuriating to me is like, I've bet. But I'm not a I don't gamble. I'm not yeah. a better. If that if that makes any You're not sense. Not a daily gamble. Just like you I might have some fun. Sometimes. I'll have a cigar, but I when I go to the doctor, I've never told them that I'm a smoker. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, but this is greed, and that's why I'm glad he got caught. Mm -hmm. And I hope anybody else in the league or any around this shit gets caught too, because this is just pure greed. It is a privilege to be in the NBA. It is a privilege to be able to pay your bills from a game like the NBA. And the fact that you risked all of that shit for what twenty you was gonna turn twenty thousand into forty thousand? Mm -hmm. Like at best, yeah. And <laughs> like and I'm just so confused on what the hell, like and then it's the part where it's like it's the game. Yeah. It's the integrity of being a player and now you're a part of this like sorority of a brotherhood of just like competing and playing for something and having some pride and and just being a part of that shit and you threw it away for for a $20,000 yeah, bet? In all seriousness, you know just, how many it's, people it's not worth it. It's not worth NBA it at talent. all. It's not Isaiah worth it. Isaiah Austin <laughs> has NBA talent was going to the NBA but he got stopped for some shit that he his he can't control his body. He had, you know what I mean? Like Isaiah Austin is a perfect example of somebody who would love to be in the NBA, love to be able to play, compete, be in a locker room, a, a part of that, but his body wouldn't allow him to. And here it is. You have the opportunity, fine and well, but you want to take your opportunity and bet on your damn self. Yo, 
Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame because when Pete Rose bet, he bet on him to win. Hey, that, <laughs> hey you bet on, on your real, stuff to be ass. On the real, I was gonna that say, what's crazy. the difference? And it's not like he's gonna make a big difference, but at least if he would have taken his overs and he was trying to like, yes. he would get it better. Yeah. He takes twenty I, shots all of his for real, yeah. I have a lot more respect. I yeah. look at you a lot different as a man I'll and as a my competitor and as a yeah. person where you bet the under on yourself. Mike, I'm coming to here. I want you to put twenty thousand on this podcast. I'm gonna be ass today. I just got a feeling in my stomach that I'm gonna be ass today. Today is gonna be my worst podcast. That is crazy to me. He taking the under on himself. Yeah, that means he knew beforehand. I'm about to sit see out this game. The video no, where he, he hits he the would, three. He faked injuries. Yes, yes. Um, I seen that thing. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, Mike is talking to talk, talk about that. Uh, there's a video where it's like he hits a three. And he and made it's that face. Weird, yeah, it's a weird looking three. It hits all backboard and then it pans into like a like close up of his face and it's all scrunched up. Like I he, saw that. Yeah. He didn't want to hit it because he's yeah. getting close to that over. <laughs> and it's just obviously this is all being investigated, right? Yeah. We won't mm-hmm. know for sure for some time, but it, it the report is the report. Yeah, mm-hmm. the report is the report. You're and not coming back from this. It's disappointing, and I think that the NBA is going to set an example if everything be- becomes like, oh, we know that this was Jante. They have to set an example. I hope they do. I, I never want to. Yeah. If this is all true, I would never want to see Jonte Porter in the league. Again. Well, I, I he think, was barely yeah. in the yeah, goddamn league to start league. off with. So He's like a two way player. He got a yeah. whole brother in the league. Yeah. He has this a, is like he, a player on a, a whole, max contract. He has a whole brother. <laughs> yeah. From what I know of, from watching his brother and him come up in the ranks, I, I think they come from a nice family. I don't want to say that they was rich or wealthy or anything Coach like that. Coach follows me on Twitter. But. Come on, man. What are you doing? Y'all have full rides to Mizzou. They got sisters and a younger brother that hoop and play different sports and everything. They always look like I read like that their sister tore her ACL five, uh, three times. Damn. That's crazy. That's so they just all have in the same knee? history. Uh, that part I don't oh. know. But. but it's just like beautiful family. Look from what everything that I've seen following Michael Porter Jr. since he was in high school. Just nice upbringing. You know what I'm saying? And they good. Yeah, dad was a coach. Coached at Mizzou. Reason why they went there. Brothers on a max contract. What the hell are you doing? Yeah. What the hell are you doing? Twenty thousand dollars on the over. I mean, for the under on yourself is the most ridiculous shit I've ever heard. Pete Rose should be in the Hall of Fame because at least he had enough cojones to bet on himself. Pete Rose coming out. Hey, I put fifty thousand. We finna bust the ass. Yeah. And you know what's crazy? Jonte Porter could have just been out there just busting his ass to get a better contract, mm-hmm. and he could have ended up getting. Way more money than 40 that, bands. That, that's like, that, a great that's, point, Derek. Like, that's what he could have done. He could have bet on himself to just go out. Not, not, not betting, a little, not yeah, actually not a little betting, yeah. but like he could have went out there. He had the opportunity <laughs> to go out there Because he bet on himself. <laughs> he could have went out there so and well. hooped and got a better contract and been making millions. Instead. That's a nail on the coffin, And now it's like, now you might not never get a contract yep. again. So Any money you was potentially trying to get by gambling, you could have made five times over by busting your, your ass on the court. That's all you got to do. Because when you play in that center position, right now all you got to do is he already was shooting threes, even though he really wasn't making a high volume of them. But like, <laughs> hey, he the reason because he was betting at the goddamn. Under. <laughs> yeah, who <laughs> knows? Who knows what his real game looked like? Yeah, he out there try, he trying to be out there on ass on purpose. So who knows? Who yeah. knows what his game is like? Yeah. He honestly rebounded, speaking. block shots. Because the Jonte Porter I know, the Jonte Porter I know is a remarkable three point shooter. Mm. Remarkable. That I think was he's one a good three point shooter because that clip where he. Tried to miss on purpose and it banked in. Like, damn, I'm better than I thought. <laughs> There's also just a lot of people going back to look at the specific games. Um, yeah. There was a Tom Habistro went through all of the footage and uh, there was this is a very minor thing, but at the end of a quarter. Oh, it's all major now. <laughs> very true. Uh, at the end of a quarter, a shot goes up and instead of getting the rebound with the last couple seconds on the clock, he let the ball just bounce oh. <laughs> and just walked away <laughs> instead That's of grabbing that a, board. A real center would get that so he can get that rebound. Yeah, it just adds I, to his yeah. game. I, 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 I want all my a, shit. A little bit of the play in the game is hey, that pattern. We, sure. we only no food on the table. Yeah, sure. exactly. So uh, Russell Westbrook would have got that rebound. Russell Westbrook got oh, hell yeah. more. <laughs> he would have rebounded, threw it off the backboard, got one more. <laughs> we just got multiple gambling scandals going on in our sports, like the Shohei slash his interpreter thing just yeah. going on. Um, and a lot of people are putting it like on the scale of the NFL, who have caught a couple different people yes. gambling, uh, like Calvin Ridley. But yeah. he, he wasn't gambling on himself because he was For injured sure. at the time. Yeah. They gave him like six games, I think was the number. 
I think because this is basically the first example for the NBA, they going to show like, hey, you see what Jonte Porter did? You can't do that. And I, he might get like a real ban. He yeah, should. No, he like should. a ban. The, but this is great for the NBA because, number one, he's Jonte Porter. Nobody's going to ask him. I was going to say, he, that's, he don't that's have that's no leverage in this. Number like, one. Like, he has like if it was his, br- like Michael, Michael Porter, Porter Jr. Yeah. or somebody that really matters Sales in the grand jerseys scheme, or something. Yeah. this is a terrible, <laughs> terrible thing. But a two-way player doing this, they can afford to say, yo ass yep. can't play no more in our yes. league. Yep. And that's what I would do. I would shake the entire league for anybody to ever think about think or consider. Overseas but I teams also look at that too. Nah, nah he, he'll get nah. a nice contract overseas if he wanted to. But I do want to say, because it was speculated, people been saying, man, he probably not the only one. He probably ain't the only one betting. He's the only damn fool betting the undoing himself. Yes, especially <laughs> I, a lot of money. I don't a think nobody else in the NBA. They probably is betting. Don't get me wrong. They probably are betting. I don't think they betting the undoing himself. That's <laughs> that, that's that's idiotic. That's stupid. And that's just like. That's just you sabotaging. It's a word I can't even say on here. You literally sabotaging your team. To bet every under is (laughs) crazy. No, yourself and yourself. Yourself. I've never like I I, I get it. You know, I mean, I'm not a selfish person either. But damn, I want myself to do good. I'm not gonna lie. I don't ever come in like, man. I'm just especially because he don't have a guaranteed contract. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. He could have played for a guaranteed contract. (laughs) This shit make no. He was playing on the Raptors, who are bad and playing like really. I don't want to start no rumors. This shit just don't make no more sense. They got to make sure he ain't got no drug problem. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I'm serious. They got to make sure he don't have no drug or alcohol type of problem. They got to go make sure. J.B. Bickerstaff was saying that some gamblers was threatening him. They yes. got to make sure this young man ain't getting gambled. I mean, again, threatened or something. This makes no sense, bro. They have to check in and make sure he is okay in some way, shape, or form. I'm not trying to start no rumors. But yeah. this just, when you try to sit and, and just like grasp it, like it makes it no sense. It don't make no sense, yeah. Not, nothing other, of it makes sense. Other than greed. Really. Greed, yeah. yeah. And greed would never make sense. get away with it and greed. be slick, but yeah. in 2024, they watch <sighs> everything. Yes. Bro. Every, they got people As that watch everything, Bro, and watch those people everything. watch those people, and those people got people that Bro, watch them. They put, out a, like, yeah. just, they put out a report yeah. yesterday that Diddy House got raided. Yes. 15 minutes later, I saw a video of Diddy pacing at a Miami hotel. Yes, I did. They're that Everybody is TMZ watching every single everywhere. thing. It's crazy. Yep. Yes, yeah, his, everything it, is getting. And it's not even. And it's not like you just got like. I just seen a video. There's a video on YouTube of him shaking waves. You got people that that be on Twitter the, the that will do the job for the free. World. <laughs> Remember? Oh <laughs> my god! You got people that Y'all do that job <laughs> that have that job. Then you got people on Twitter that would do that job for free because yeah, you know sure. they some of the best investigators out there too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And it's crazy the people who was threatening JB Bickerstaff didn't get charged. They found them. Oh, they, they did? No, they didn't. No, I'm saying they found them. Yes. Like, oh, they yeah, did. they found them, and no, no charges was placed. And I'm just like, that's why they do that stuff. Like, I feel like sports gambling. If you want to do it, do it. But like, there's a there's a there's a line where you draw and DM and players and coaches. Threatening them, threatening their lives, their families, sending them directly. Yeah, JB Bickerstaff, they was this, talking about his kids and yes, stuff. Yes, that's and that's like where he live. Why why do that? That shit is bogus. I just those never are real humans with anything. real feelings. And yeah, they that JB Bickerstaff is also <laughs> he's also a multimillionaire. So y'all better be just picking y'all ba- your battles. Yes. If if <laughs> I was a play, an NBA player or a coach and I was a multimillionaire, you and my DM, all right, say less. Five thousand on you. <laughs> I, I'll show you how to gamble. I just never. I'll understood. show you how to gamble. You want you want to talk about my kids, the school they go to? Like I ain't a multi million now. All right, cool. Two fifty on him. Two fifty on you. And that's how I'm saying. I just put two fifty on you. I'm gonna show you how to gamble. Watch, watch my watch my parlay hit. Watch my parlay hit. They got these dudes messed up because they because he wear a uh, wear a little polo white culture. All right, y'all y'all play with the wrong one. Money is powerful. Man. Y'all play y'all play with the wrong one. Especially if I'm if I had Monty Williams contract as a coach. <laughs> come on, Monty come on. Get, I'm gonna I'm, I'm scare the hell out of you. They gonna have this shit gonna get, get so big. Uh, when Wold find out about this, I'm finna be on the hot seat. Cause y'all ain't finna come in and intimidate me. I'm using my me. Phoenix Suns money on your ass. These grown, grown <laughs> men, my fist money. Grown <laughs> men, y'all, y'all talking about threatening their family and wives. All right, somebody put me in a corner like that. You, you, you gonna get a response for your ass? I bet you stop gambling. Show you how to gamble. You gonna, you gonna, you gonna gamble your life. That. Like going, it's never to the point where you need to go that far to never, do somebody no. never. threat about their family. Never. And, 
that's just one case in with JB, but it's just like Tyrese Oliver said that people don't view him as a person; they view him as a prop. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, that's, that's yeah. we were just talking yesterday about uh, when Malik Beasley was playing for the Lakers, how he was getting like threats and all that. He type. was, yeah. See what I'm saying? It's, it's just, just and that's control, not the bro. only case. It's so many cases, and it's just like it should never be that. Far. Yeah, it should not be. And in all seriousness, I really though, don't care if it's about the gambling or anything like that. Basketball is way too. Of a, like a non-serious thing for you to be putting yeah. people in those type of it's situations. It's just mind blowing to me because, like I said, like yeah, like you ha- you got to have some balls to do that. You you That's do that to the wrong person, phase too. and they they respond like you could put a person in the corner where they like on edge, yes. and you send that. And I'm telling you, I was joking, but I, I, right. <laughs> all right. um, it's just it, it's just a shame. Like just to get back to the Jonte Porter shit, it's just like it's so many people in the, in in the world who has basketball talent. Um, you know what I mean? Would love to be in the NBA or players who are are in the NBA. Like, man, if you're in, if you gonna bet the under on yourself and not do shit with it, I would love you. To, I would love for you to give your knee to uh, Joel Embiid. I love for you to give your knee to Derrick Rose. If oh. you gonna use it to put under on yourself, give it to somebody that's always getting hurt. Fuck it. Like, what are you doing? Did you have to drop the mic today? I don't know. I was just about to transition uh, and say we can go to a little bit yeah, of a lighter thing. Yeah, because Dante Porter gives me, that, me just in a off. little bit of a dark space right there. <laughs> Uh, yesterday, I was just kind of like going down that memory lane about all the players just kind of like gone through the Lakers. And I was thinking we do a starting five of just players that we kind of miss with starting five of players that we wish we kind of had on our team back. It don't uh, got to be the best player. Right. For sure. But, okay. the you know, the players you enjoy watching. That can, I want to hear your like lineup. Because the Lakers, you, could have, you I got know, a lot I know, of options. I was thinking about really that a lot. I got to have Alex Crusoe back. One of my favorite okay. players. Absolutely. I got to say KCP, too. I love it. I know he went. I know, like he started off a little shaky, but he really grew. Like he really grew into. Himself. I'm loving your team already. Big reason why y'all won a championship, KCP. Yep. Give me Josh Hart back too. Oh, oh man. man, you got some gritty guys. Yes, you do. Don't know how many games y'all gonna win, but y'all gonna fight. <laughs> uh, I gotta take Bi back. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. really think Bi yeah. cools, but I'm gonna go Bi. Right yeah, you <laughs> go Bi. I mean, center. I still go go. Yeah. Hey. So can I do a timeout? Can What's I have up? one request? Yeah. Can you please go back and find somebody from the teams before them? I'm talking about the Robert Sacre, uh, Xavier Henry. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I could. <laughs> well, he loved Andrew off Godblock. The bench, then. He loved Andrew Godblock. Andrew Godblock. Andrew Godblock. Godblock he can't really make it now, though. Yeah. yeah, that was 2K. That was more 2K. Yeah, yeah. He had, like, Kendall. I think it was when, um, I want to say if Kendall it was Marshall. end of the season. I was talking about the Kid Marshall <laughs> days, Tariq Black It was either days. end of the season or, like, in the playoffs where everybody was hurt. Like, Kobe wasn't in the lineup anymore, and they had, like, I think, Gallock and one other person, and Gallock dropped, Jordan like, Clarkson. 20-something. Ryan Kelly. Wow. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Jordan Hill. Mm. Uh, I kind of want Nick Young back. Oh, Yeah, Nick you got no Young. five. Who your center? Yeah, you was building a team at first. I was. I want Nico Miritich back. Oh, oh man. man. That rookie year. Oh, Nico. Brother. Nico Miritich is dope. I'm so mad that that happened because I loved his game. Yeah. yeah. I would even take Bobby Porter's back, too. Now. Just not together. <laughs> <laughs> even when he left and went overseas, I would go watch. I mean, even now, the uh, GM survey, people still voting him as the best player outside of the NBA. Yeah. Did like, he yeah. win multiple MVPs over yes, there? Yes, he did. Yeah, so. yeah. Nico be doing his thing. Yeah. He it's kind of sad that, he, basketball player. that punch really just made him want to leave. Yeah. Larry Markkinen will be on that list, obviously. Oh, for sure. Oh, boy, you big. Yeah. A, a front yes, court wise. Yes, I am. Front court wise. Uh, <laughs> who else? Who else? Who else? Actually, no, I'm going to go back. My center I'm going to take back is Jordan Hill. You want okay. to take Jordan Hill? Jordan Hill. You ain't hear him say that? No, I didn't. Uh-uh. Oh. <laughs> It's okay. He pulled an email. Yeah, he did. Trading Jimmy Butler was the worst thing we've ever done as an organization, so I would probably bring Jimmy Butler back. You were so on board for it when it happened, though. Hell yeah. It made sense in the moment. That means we got sleeve jerseys back, the black ones. Then then I'm good on (laughs) it. He said he wanted D-Wade back. (laughs) I want Chris Dunn back. (laughs) Oh, oh my gosh. Bro, Chris Dunn was my favorite player in that two and a half year span. He was throwing punches at Jabari. Yep. They bogus for not hitting each other. They just missed. Nobody the, hit throwing each other, punches, honestly. but throwing punches and just completely missing. Who, so who more bogus? Jabari got the reach. Because <laughs> <laughs> ex Rondo, Rondo connected. Yeah, <laughs> that's because his favorite player thought it was smart to do this to somebody's face. <laughs> he said, "I'm the president of the PA. You're not gonna hit me." Man, what the hell was that? <laughs> I wish we would be somewhere you finna fight you get up on dudes so so. that's that's somebody we ain't never fought before he was not expecting a two piece to come in uh, that's 
That's a t- that's that two piece was spicy Wend- for Popeyes too. Back. You take Wendell back? <laughs> I'm not against that. Oh, give us Max Struess. Oh yeah! Oh my god! <laughs> forgot about those I twelve forgot games. About Max <laughs> he campaign too. I'm good. I'm oh yeah. <laughs> and then at the at the center, uh, I was I thought Wendell was the center. Wendell could work. Give us Big Lou Cornette, please. He acted kind of <laughs> different <laughs> in Boston. I thought recently. that was Robert Ory, wasn't it? He was Robert Ory, according to the worst coach in NBA history. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I remember that Jim happening. Jim Boylan literally said he plays winning basketball, yeah. bro. And we was winning 22 and we, and we games. we wasn't winning games. <laughs> <laughs> bro, I remember they said that on the broadcast. Like, it was Casey, Casey Johnson on sideline report. Well, Jim Boylan uh, compares Luke Cornette to Robert Ory. And Stacey Keek said, what? <laughs> on the broadcast. Like, as loud as he could. And I was like, oh, yeah, love some Stacey Keek. When, Stacey, right? when, when the, the city's number one commentator disagrees with your take completely, yeah. you, you on some bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> I swear I thought I saw Jim Boylan riding a bike. Wait, in wait, wait. Did we ever recently. talk about when Stacey King had got caught with the Derrick Rose stuff? Oh, we didn't no, talk we about didn't. that. I didn't like the sad. fact that afterwards he had came out. He's like, I think I didn't got got. <laughs> He said it was all cap, baby. It was all cap. <laughs> feel like, oh yeah. Just, but it was crazy because it was like just verbatim silly. the same exact words, like From what the, the tweet said account. about Derrick Rose retiring. Yeah. And you would think that someone like him would be more tapped in to where he would know what's a fake account and what's not. Say so he got got. <laughs> thirsty. Just thirsty. <laughs> he said he saw the check mark and that was all he needed. <laughs> <laughs> you oh yeah, he waited back. You can oh, you know what that's you know what that's part of it too is that that was probably on his for you page. Because ain't yes. no way he following that fake for page. Sure. Yes. For sure. I blocked that account. I blocked sure. every fake account. Yes. You're every, not gonna no, get me. No, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I mute accounts most. I'm, most I'm, I'm gonna start blocking. Yeah. I'm Only ones block. I block are like the porn accounts. <laughs> and I block the ones that like why is there hundreds of Twitter accounts? Where people just post people uh, videos of other people dying. Yeah, those get blocked. Hey, prayers out to Baltimore though. Yes, they bridge collapsed today. Yes, and uh, I did not uh, see that. I'm 20, 20 or so people now were in the water. They're searching. They're for searching them. for them. I did not see that. Damn. Yeah, waking up to that. Was, yeah, a boat like hit the bridge and it like made a cargo it fire go on. The I woke up, brushed my teeth. And came right here. I did not have not been on my phone today. Yeah, that was That's the first smart. thing I saw when I opened up. Huh? My That's smart. I try my hardest to do that, but it's hard. Yeah, now that I think phone. about it, I have not been on my phone once. Yeah, so I mean, what about you? What about you and that, your that mean, Hold up, I need to go on my phone now because I ain't been on it yet. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Lakers say Le- uh, LeBron James' left ankle has been downgraded to out for tonight's game in Milwaukee. That sucks. That sucks. Mark yeah, we, we got a nice little slate today, and that makes it worse. All right, yeah. but my team. Um, speaking of uh, g- good segue, Derrick Rose, my point guard for the Knicks. Uh, my center is obviously Chris Porzingis, my boy. Um, and then the gaps that we got a point guard, we got a center. It's just gonna be guys that's interchangeable. Give me a damn. Somebody ain't gonna make it. Jr. is a shooting guard. My small forward is Landry Fields, and my power forward is Marcus Morris. That year he was with us. Oh, yeah. the season, he, he was all like an all star. He was averaging a dub. Marcus Morris was going crazy for y'all. But that way. make <laughs> that make me a little sad because the other person I wanted to put on there. Can you guess? And the reason, you maybe you can guess too. I don't know if K, KB he he knows the guy, but it won't be on top of his brain. Y'all y'all kind of like him too, but I think y'all like him. You really like him, I think, on a different team. But think about that era with Landry Fields, that Knicks team, right when they was Gallinari. You're you're getting warmer. Wilson Chandler. Wilson, Wilson Chandler, Chandler. <laughs> my boy. Wilson Chandler. I had to, I. I Putting putting Jr. on the team, man, I couldn't put Wilson Chandler, but boy, Wilson I love Chandler that. Wilson Landry Chandler Fields. was nice, huh? Over Landry Fields, I love Landry Fields when he was with the Knicks. <laughs> love Landry Fields when he was with the Knicks. I love all of them though. That's my big three: Gallinari, Wilson Chandler, Landry Fields. Right. They was hooping, man. They was. <laughs> Speaking of Landry Fields, his team had a thirty-point comeback. Yes, yes, they did. yes, the Atlanta Hawks, man. But he can't give his team. Oh, I thought he did. I thought he was working with me with the Bulls. I was working with KB. Oh, okay, yeah, the comeback. Hey, I was watching this game while grinding, my dude. Mm-hmm. On 2K, <laughs> on 2K, on 2K. <laughs> well, I was grabbing my build on 2K. <laughs> yeah, you was grabbing your build on 2K. <laughs> He's watching the game. I, and I, I got distracted for a second. And in my ear, all I hear is, 
Jason Tatum, eight second violation. <laughs> <laughs> he totally was just bringing the ball up nonchalant. And I said, oh, yeah, they finna lose. They was still up at that point. Yeah. I said, they finna lose, man. They, they was coming back, but it felt like Boston still could win this game. Yeah. It was still winning everything. I they, knew something was up. He said up. that. I said, yeah, they finna lose. I watched the game on mute because I hate both commentary teams. This is how I knew something was and up, one though. Of the, one of the comments a dude made was, man, this Jason, this Jason Tatum dude complains a lot. I didn't realize so much he complains. I'm dead. <laughs> I saw one clip where he was saying um, he complains like Caitlin Clark. Yeah, I did I'm like, see what that. Is going, what is going <laughs> on here? <laughs> How are we throwing shots across the I knew it was going to be a long day <laughs> because what's it, Vic Kregi? How you pronounce Vic it? Vic Kregi, yeah. Third bro, quarter, he was snapping. Bro, he was, they was down like a dub. <laughs> he hitting shots and he celebrating. Yes. They got Kobe Bufkin dancing on the bench and they down a dub. They <laughs> I was like, there's no way. Bro, DeAndre Hunter My took... My boy been started. <laughs> <laughs> DeAndre Hunter took the most ill-advised shot to work. The fast break one? It's just a pull-up three. They yeah, up by yeah. one. They don't need to shoot the ball. And he made it. He made it. They were something like that on the broadcast for the last... they like, nah, it was a good shot. But I'm telling them time and clock. They're saying Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, young fella. That. But yeah, that was crazy, bro. Because yeah. does that... So this is the second time the soldiers have done this in this. I don't, I'm not no, thinking anything no, about it. Not, 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 not even funny, but no, is. You want to, I'm not taking none of this. I'm taking no they, consideration. Dean Wade did light their ass up again. They blew that 20 point lead. Yeah, and then they blow this 30 point lead. I just think when you're that good, you do to have some human days. Yeah, for well, sure. You get a little complacent. You play with your food a little bit, and you don't really take care of business. Here's some stats from my team at Omaha. The Hawks trail by 30 points of one. They're their team's biggest comeback um, in the play by play era. They are th- tied for the fourth be- biggest comeback in the last 25 years. In 2022, the Clippers were down by 35 to the Wizards and won. The Kings were down by 35 to the Bulls and won in 09, 010. The Celtics were down by 32 against San Antonio in 2020, 2021. The one that's so interesting to me, as you, as you can hear, all of those are modern era stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In 2002, the Lakers were down by 30 and beat Dallas. Yes, 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 yes. Bro, that's a game Kobe went ape shit. <laughs> Kobe went ape shit in that game. They was they was getting killed like at the half. And Kobe and them, bro, I remember that game from my childhood. I remember that. Bro, that the reason why that is it, so I remember crazy. That. Kobe went ape shit. Because watching the comebacks back then, I don't know. They a little bit more nah, exciting. Teams were Ain't nothing not bad. Coming back from down 15 in 2000. No, no, that's what makes it even more impressive. 30? So because like three-point shots weren't like shot as well as they were now so yes. like it's so different yeah um but yeah this is just some ins- some insane stuff and that was the second loss of the season for the dallas mavericks they were 17 and one going into that game 17 and one um but yeah kobe had 27 shaq had 26 and robert ori had 11 that was our top three scores <laughs> <laughs> like it's not, we're not talking about the a, final score the final oh. score was 105 to 103 oh yeah yeah so it okay. wasn't like it was 130 to something. Yeah. yeah, they was losing by 27 in the fourth. To start the fourth, they was down 27, bro. I remember so this So wait, shit. what did Kobe in with? You said 27. 27. But I don't think what he was they had a 44 yeah, yeah. Point, I was curious what he, how many points he had in the fourth quarter. Did you say? Uh, no, but I don't know if I can look that up right he now. He must have had like 16 in the fourth. He had to have something crazy like that. Yeah, maybe. Um, either way, with a crazy comeback. Can, can I do a, a, the second Kenny for your thoughts yes, let's segment? Yes, Love a Kenny for my thoughts. Yeah, Kobe picked up his second foul in the first quarter on a on a uh, foul on a charge. Mm. There are a few teams in basketball that are given the benefit of the doubt strictly based on reputation. Can y'all guess those two teams that I'm referring to? The Lakers and the Warriors. No, those teams are bad. I mean, oh. like g- goodish teams that get the benefit of the doubt. Because of their reputation. Because of the people on their roster. Oh, the Suns. The Suns are one. Uh, yes. Who just no. lost last night to the Victor Wibben Yama Liss <laughs> Spurs. The other Shout team. Shout Jeremy Sohan. The other team. The Clippers. Oh. These are two teams. I don't want to hear I don't want to hear shit about the Clippers right now. That that we given the benefit of the doubt based on reputation because they have Kawhi, so Paul sorry. George, or James Harden. This is Kenny for your thoughts. He had 21 to 4. I'm so okay. sorry. Kenny okay. for your thoughts. And then the, the Suns have KD, Devin Booker, Bradley Beal, right? Yep. We look at that and say, like, okay, we don't care that over the last 22 games, the Clippers are 11 and 11. 
they had the stretch where they were 20 and 4 in that, and we're like, oh, that's the best team in the league. They're the number two behind the Denver Nuggets. Hell, some people here even picked them to be higher than the Denver Nuggets at that yeah. time. They were not just winning games, they were dominating their opponents. Where the fourth quarter, you look at the score, like, damn, they up by 26 right now. That we have basically the same level of sample size going the opposite direction now. Yeah. 11 and 11 is inexcusable. And then if you peek behind or you peek under the hood, the defense that was so elite during that 20 and 4 run is now the 28th defense in that stretch. And we're not worried just because they have Kawhi Leonard Paul Every- George. This team has not proved anything for me to say, oh, I believe that they're gonna turn it on. Yeah. Just because they have Kawhi. I understand Kawhi is one of the best, one of the best playoff performers we have of our adult life. But some teams should not be given the benefit of the doubt that they can just turn it on because this is not a team that showed us they can turn it on. They have the conference finals appearance. But if you remember, that conference finals appearance wasn't them being bad and then all of a sudden playoff come around, they were good. This team, that team was very consistent throughout the regular season and then t- took that consistency to the playoffs. This team has lost game after game against the Cavs the other day. I gave it the benefit of the doubt. It was a matinee game in L.A. Those early games are always tough. They yeah. lose that game. Last night they played against the Pacers. The Pacers were also on the back-to-back where they went against your team and damn near gave up 200 points. <laughs> that was, that was kind of cool. And in this one, the Clippers are lollygagging. They're not hustling. And why do they feel like, just because they are the three, three of the best players ever, right? These are three yeah. Hall of Famers. They feel like that they don't have to bring it every night. Same thing with the Suns. Oh, Victor Wimbyama's not playing tonight. We good. We ain't got to hustle. We ain't got to play defense. And they lose to Jeremy. These are teams. I just, again, I understand it, right? Kawhi Leonard is a fucking robot. And we've seen him become a robot come mid-April all the way to June before. But I'm watching this. And if I watch this without the, without the opinion of, the, oh, that's Kawhi. Oh, that's Paul George. Oh, that's James Harden. And just look at the basketball. This shit is weak. And I do the same thing with the Suns. Forget that that's Kevin. Forget that that's Devin. Forget that that's Bradley. Just the basketball aspect of these things. I am not impressed. And for me to think that they're going to be able to flip the switch again, it's, it feels almost impossible to me. Yeah. I also would say this to add to that. <clears throat> I honestly think it's even unfair to put the Suns in a conversation with the Clippers. Because of the, the, the lack of consistency in the yeah, first year together? Yep. This is the first year they have a brand new head coach. Mm-hmm. Bradley Bill has been in and out of the lineup and cannot stay on the floor for for whatever reason. Just unfortunate. That in itself is thing. And that team stinks. Mm-hmm. That's the three, and then they have a bunch of shit they plug in because that's how and it honestly, is in the first Bradley year. Bill hold up, the, hold up. Bradley Bill not even the perfect fit for um, that third spot. Well, well, we'll I get agree. to that. But, that. but just that team sucks. Yeah. Or I don't want to say suck, but the pieces just ain't yeah. there. The Clippers, they have those guys. They have Norman Powell. A perennial six-man of the year candidate. Russell Westbrook has been a great fit for them. Who they have Zubac, yep. Terrence Mann. They have a coach who's been there. They have, they have a real eight-man rotation. Yes, they do. And a coach who is not new, has success with them, and knows them well. Yep. So to me, and they had the success this year where they just went off. To me, it's it's just not the same. I get that they both have it, it, it's, it's similarities, but the Clippers are way like this, yeah. and the Suns are kind of down here. So I the reason I put the Suns there is because there's no room for improvement. Really, no. they can't make any trades. They can't go. Only thing they can really do is bring back Grayson Allen. And this is a team, Matt Ishby and company, decided that this is our roster. This is what we're competing with. And I just don't. I don't. I don't look at them, and I don't go into a playoff series and fear that team. No. Other than saying that they have Kevin and Devin, there's nothing to fear about that team. It's <laughs> kind of sad because the top end talent is so heavy. But, like, when you do talk about a team that has to compete for a championship, it's more than just the three guys. Like, you got to have a complete roster. And, like, even if your three guys ain't doing those little things, like you saying, hustling and playing ex- excellent defense, like that, that's stuff that builds championship pedigrees. And, like, at least for the, for the Clippers standpoint, I will say this, we did get – like 30 games of dominance from them, like where they did look good. 24 we, games, yeah. Like we haven't gotten that from the Suns at all this year. Mm-hmm. Like at least the Clippers mm-hmm. did show us a stretch of like when everything is clicking, we're one of the best teams in the league. So at least we got that sample size. And then now the last, what, 21 games, yeah, haven't been sexy. But I think they should. I don't think – I think that's what the Clippers should do. 
that's why I look at this because I talked about them yesterday on, on on my podcast, and I was disappointed in the defense specifically. Because yeah. if it's one thing that they you you, yeah, they you might have they, they should that. always have a defensive yeah. end. Like all year they've been <laughs> solid defensively. They got defensive guys. Like that's just something that they should have, bro. This team before last night was giving up forty two percent from three for the last eleven ten games. They just gave up 60%. The, the Patriots shot 60% from three from them. To me, that is – it says a lot because it identifies with communication. I think when, you ha- when you're when guarding the three-point line in today's game, mm-hmm. if you're not doing a good job of it, that says that y'all aren't communicating because normally teams are generating three-pointers from screening and different actions like that where I have to tell Mike, you there, I'm switch. you over the top, you right there. So if you're giving up those type of looks on a consistent basis where teams are shooting for over 40%, 60% in the game, that means it ain't nobody just getting hot step side, step in three. No, they are generating absolutely good looks. That means somebody is getting beat off the dribble, somebody's going to help, but there's no communication to help the helper, get back, switch it. They're not doing that shit. And anytime you're a team with the type of status that they have and the type of goals that they have, and you're doing this this late in the season, it is it is worrisome. Yeah. It is worrisome. It is. And like, one thing I am excited for, though, Russ is back. Russ played yesterday. He only played 18 minutes. Is there's one thing Russ does. He puts that battery in your back. He is a dude that goes out there and gets offensive rebounds. He plays with that energy, that tenacious, that tenacious feel that they don't have without him. Mm-hmm. So maybe Russ being back when he's fully into the rotation, now you get less of mere coffee minutes, now you get more Russ. Well, they, it, it could, he, it he has change. no uh, minutes restriction. The reason he's going to play 18 minutes because by the time the fourth quarter came around, it, it, they were dead in the water. Yeah. Last night, they looked old. And I mean significantly older than their opponent. And they are. Yeah. They are. But – that that shouldn't be the determinant factor. They're not so, old to where they should look exactly, look old. Yeah. Exactly. And so you think it's the you think it's the old? I think it's I, I don't I don't know exactly what it is honestly because I, I mean their average age is older. I think it's one of the oldest in the league, but it's not. It's not like thirty. LeBron, yeah, like Kawhi, yeah, we've seen Kawhi teams Paul of this still range in their prime. win. Right, we've yeah. seen teams of this range win. So I don't know if it's really that either. But having Russell Westbrook back should help because again, he is that energy where he don't look old even if he's yeah, yeah. older. I think I, I credit the, honestly their offense looks significantly like. They're, James Harden and Rus- Russell are just different. Like, the offense looks different. Russell, a lot of the times, is, like, passing up. He's pushing the pace and everything. But since post-All-Star, literally, statistically, every step they have is down. Yep. You know, when we're talking about points, too, three-point percentage, rebounding, block, like, everything. And so it's not just that they on uh, the losing streak, but it's everything in the wrong trend, too. Listen to the teams they're around defensively in this stretch. The Utah Jazz are the worst defense in the stretch, 30th. The Chicago Bulls, the Washington Wizards, and then they write there twenty seven. Toronto Raptors, Portland Trail Blazers. Oh, the Clippers have a worse <laughs> defensive rating than the last four teams. I said. You know why you oh always be making God. me mad with the Clippers when they have bad defensive stats too? Because we already know they got players like Kawhi, Paul George, it's people that can guard. And they, a defensive minded coach. And that communication thing is key too, because they switch everything. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's one of the things. It's like. I wish one time we could see Paul George or Kawhi. I know they carry a lot of offensive load, but like lock in to somebody for a quarter and take yeah. them down. Especially against think, the damn Pacers. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that's why having Russ back maybe is like important. Because like before he got hurt defensively, Russ was locked in. Mm-hmm. Like he was he was saying himself he should be making all defensive teams. So like maybe him being more locked in when he's back. Maybe he's that voice on the defensive side of the ball that they was missing. I, I, I'm excited for him to be back because I, I think he needs to be that voice in the locker room. Yeah. I think this team, and this is just what I see in, in my interpretation of what, I, what I've what i seen. I'm not trying to offend nobody. I'm not, uh, you know, obviously I like Paul George and all of these guys, so I ain't trying to speak outside of anything. I just think they have a team of a, a lot of fragile guys, mentally and physically. Mm-hmm. Tyloo said last night in his post game interview, "We're yeah. soft." Do you remember the like the he spark did say that. for that when they went on the street? Remember Russell had literally went up to Tyron Lewis, like put I'll me on, on the, the bench, bench. Yeah. and then that's when they went on that streak or whatever. But yeah, I agree. That voice in the locker room is big for a lot of players that really don't. You don't really feel like they carry that. You, you know? see a guy like Kawhi. Physically, is kind of fragile. Even though I, I don't judge people because I don't think Kawhi. Or anybody that's always hurt wants to be hurt. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not saying in a judgy way, but, you know what I mean, kind of reserved. Not, you know, is always, for the most of his career, going to choose to to not play through things and, and, and those type of things. I think also James Harden, his biggest moments, his legacy is him diminishing. 
versus him in like the regular season. Then you have Paul George, a guy who has historically kind of deferred. Even when he was, even when Paul George was at his height, with OKC I, or with the Pacers, with the Pacers, like, was I, with the, I was just thinking that I was like, was it the Pacers? Because even with OKC, he was an MVP kind of like a, a candidate, at least like top three, top five. Like which, when, which version was better? Yeah, yeah. And honestly, well, I felt like at the OKC. height, it might be the Pacers. Um, it really do. Statistically, it's OKC, but the Pacers, you're going up against I'm, Bron I'm, I'm on that stage. Take, take the Pacers, Mano, Mano, I'm taking the Pacers, but yeah. my thing is, I don't even think he was a leader of that team. I think that was George Hill, David West, as far as the locker room and being that voice. I think he goes to OKC. I think that team may have needed him to not defer and be a little bit more like. Um, this our shit, Russ, and not this your shit, and I'm just here to be your sidekick type thing because the production, he was the number one guy. Yeah. But his attitude, his body language and everything was like, I'm here, I'm following you, Russ. Take us. Even in that first series against the Jazz when they was kind of getting their ass beat. When Joe and, Ingles yeah. was <laughs> – When they were saying Joe Ingles was locking them up. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like that last game, he was shooting like 3 or 15, and he kind of like – I remember being a fan of Paul George and just being like, come on, y'all, I can pull this out. And Russ giving his all, and Paul George got to a point in that game where he would stop looking at the basket. Every time he got the ball, he just looked at Russ and gave him the ball. You know what I'm saying? Like no, I remember, I'm going to keep was, bringing up that game we went to, too, because I'm just kind of thinking about it, too. And honestly, I keep bringing this up is just the game, too. This is speculation, I keep bringing too, that game up, too. For, like, a little bit of the complacency you can kind of see with him. Because you remember the game we went to? He literally, I think, he took 12 shots. He missed one. Yeah. Every shot he got was not forced at all, bro. It did not look forced. It looked like he was in the Florida office. And that's just how skillful PG is. Like, he can get it in so many ways that I think he's comfortable with, like, you know, I'll play off you because I can catch, get my little one dribble in, two dribble in. I, like, he feels comfortable because he knows he can still get it when sometimes they be needing him to take a I've seen him have those 20-point quarters where it looked like they just can't stop him from getting to the rim. I thought we were going to get that last night. Yeah, yeah. There was I've, a part I've, where it looked like he was going to get a lot of going. times before where it's like they, they really just can't guard, guard Paul George. You they know? just got so many guys that are they just do. nice and don't want to step on each other's toes. That's told. why I think like Paul George, he just makes it so like Paul, with James Harden running the point. He might go too far James Harden running the point, for them. James Harden <laughs> running the point and Kawhi He's mostly been getting like all those ISOs. I love Paul George and all those actions where it's like before we get to James Harden pick and roll of the uh, the Kawhi ISO, we running all these down screens to get Paul George maybe an open look or anything like that. And like I said, his skill set he could do that. He could score twenty plus points off that. We but, don't know any of them personally. Yeah, but do y'all think James Harden would ever go to Kawhi Leonard in the middle of a game and say something to call him out? No. <laughs> no. Based off just what y'all know, which yeah. we don't know them per eight personally. But you I mean, think I haven't really seen. In the middle of a game, yeah. it's the fourth quarter, and I don't know. Kawhi just ain't doing a Kawhi thing. Do you think James Harden will go to him and say, come on, why? What you doing? You need to do that. You Probably think you not. A couple I'm, years ago, maybe. James is trying to get that contract. He yeah. Ain't doing that. Do you think, think so. Paul George <laughs> will go to James Harden and say, come on, man. Wake up. Come on. No. I think only Russ. Only Russ. Only, I think Russ is the only guy on that team. Only that Russell that Westbrook. Do it. I don't know. I can't really tell what PJ Tucker's doing. He's I don't playing know if, now. Yeah, I don't know if he's. Which is a decision. I don't know if he's vocally <laughs> saying saying anything to anybody. But Russ seems like the only one there who uh, will probably yes. say something to somebody. We, we talk about looking. Yeah. Oh God, Lee <laughs> PJ. Yeah. And that's bro, like the they're funny. sacrificing Mason Plumley and Daniel Tice in order to play PJ right now, which is just bro. Nah, they need PJ know. voice. Remember he played with the Sixers, and I figured who was telling the story, but he was like, we was sitting on the bench, and they was we was giving up all the offensive rebounds, and PJ Tucker said he said to Paul Reed, let them get another offensive rebound. <laughs> Paul Reed, they said Paul Reed snagged it and brought it down. Cause like <laughs> PJ Tucker just got the enforcer, like you got to do what he says type. I you. swear, he just don't got the same role. My favorite you know? thing with the Warriors Rocky series, yeah. Go back and watch. Draymond Green was always on his best behavior when PJ Tucker was on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I want to say. I don't want to instigate nothing. I'm not trying to start no shit. Just be as a as a view as a viewer. I always felt when I watched those series, we ain't get a lot of antics from Draymond. If you just think historically, real quick off the top of your mind, what <laughs> antics against the Rockets and all those matchups do you remember of Draymond? Draymond kicking anybody then? No. Any suspensions from Draymond? Any back and forth? Nah. Best behavior. That's what I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Shout out to Draymond. I'm a fan. I rock with both of y'all. I'm just saying. But, yeah, I, I, I do think that Russell Westbrook is that, that leader and that voice that they need because a lot of these guys are just so cool and nonchalant. Sometimes being too cool is just not the championship way. 
This is why it's I'm also not big on the, the big right. threes. Like, I, I yeah. rock with the Clippers because Paul George is my guy, and I just like the swag and, like, the Kawhi. I thought the Suns, that Suns one just don't, it's just well, not big, it, I don't think. It's not Literally enough. big three contracts. It's not like, enough. True. It's not enough dirty work. Like, yeah. championship teams need sacrifice and guys who know their role, buying into it, and willing to do those little things. And whenever I watch these big three teams, I don't see, like, the Suns. Like, it's the Spurs last night. It's just nobody that's willing to go out there and do that extra shit. What big threes have worked? Uh, the Heat. The Heat. Um, because they have the... The best yeah. guy of all time. Yeah. I mean, the, the Warriors. The that was like it a fast... That, 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 that was a quad. That was a big four. Yeah. That was a quad. But um, that was also organic players... And then Kevin came. You know that what I'm saying? The boss. It all, they already had a building the, the Celtics one year made that, everybody think that the you perfect could just role put, players, bro. You could put three great players on the team. Tony like Allen, Rondo, 08, still uh, got Doc Rivers a job, and <laughs> Leon still Paul, got teams was on that team. thinking that they can do that. Because it was a big three, but young Rondo was still ridiculous. Yes, yeah. Bro. But like, when Yo, you think, that when you boy think about that Suns team, it's just like they're financially just hindered. Like, that's why I hate big threes that aren't organically built. Because, like, your core is, like, these three, this three-headed three monster, but then the rest of your supporting cast is just ass. And I think that just puts you in such a pigeonhole. You got $50 million, got to pay to your third guy. Bradley Beal is making more money than Kevin Durant and, Brad, and Devin Booker. So that's that's – that's so bad. They didn't give him the money though. No, they didn't. But they traded for. But him. they traded. They had no other option. Contract. What did they trade for him? Can you Chris remember? Paul? It was Chris Paul and I don't remember. The and rest. some shit you don't remember. Yeah. Wait, I'm I, sorry. Re repeat what you asked. What did they trade for Bradley Beal? It was Chris Paul's contract and then some some I think two picks and some swaps in like four seconds. It was something crazy. I mean, the, that's the, a lot of draft the, capital. The too. benefit of having Chris Paul would be that the contract is shorter. Yeah. But I mean, here are some big threes that didn't work. Braun, AD, Russell Westbrook. And we count that because they traded everything to get Russ and he was on a big oh, ass contract. Yeah. Um, the oh, next I one. Ain't know, I, can, I don't know if I count that one, but I, okay. didn't, I didn't count that one, but sure. In the time, we did. That yeah. wasn't even though we, gave, all we gave it an A plus when it happened. I don't want yeah. revision. No, I'm mean, no, for the va for the va that's the same thing I'm telling you. For the value, I do it. But I was never a fan of that fit. I never, I never understood that fit. But we could count it. Kobe Nash Dwight. Oh. Uh, Nash back just was not. Yeah, that no, was not no, no. Dwight Howard did not come to play. Okay. Chris Paul, DeAndre Jordan, Blake Griffin. Tell him, Mike. Uh, you soft? As hell. <laughs> Steve Nash was also old as hell. He too. was, but I think, <laughs> I, think, I think Steve Nash could have got, got us together. I say us because that's, that's KB 2 I don't remember how many games he played. But I, I think we could have got away with it until the playoffs. If the white was the white that we yeah, thought we yeah, was getting, you know, what I mean? Kobe and the white would have taken Nash there. just had to be the 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 guard. He, he would have been a cherry. Oh, on top. I'm out this article. What happened? They got Josh Smith, Andre Drummond, and Greg Monroe. <laughs> <laughs> that was the, that was that was the worst front court in NBA history. That sounds so clunky. And, and you, you don't remember, remember that? that team? No, no, I know, but uh, it just sounds so bad. Josh Smith like, at the three the used to be my that team sound. type stuff. Van Gundy. And they gave John Lure a bag. Yes, that, John that. Lure family is still eating to this day because of Van Gundy. Like twenty uh, something million dollars for three years for John Lure. That man, I think they th gave Langston Galloway a contract, and that's why right now we don't see it often. They gave that man coach and GM and responsibilities. GM, yeah. Yeah. So he's trying to keep his coaching job by doing stupid stuff on the GM side just to get real talent in the door. They did it to, then oh, Thibodeau and, and Thibodeau Doc had, had it too. too. Thibodeau had it in Minnesota. Doc had it with the Clippers. Mm. Don't happen often no more though. Because it's just a conflict of interest. Yeah. It yeah. just doesn't make a lot of sense. I, I don't understand as a head coach why I want to have front office responsibilities. Uh, <laughs> first season, he played 50. Second game, it was only 15. But I think he had, like, a back injury. or Like, that's when yeah, he really that's started. I don't even remember it ended up being two years. I, I thought it was a one year. That's because the, one of the years was so short, and it was that second year. And I literally think, like, that's well, when he was starting going out Dwight, the league. Dwight, right? Um, Dwight didn't have two years, did he? Let me go. I don't it's think It's so did funny to look back on some of that stuff. When when a big trade happened and the nail magazine covers and stuff yeah. holding the basketball, <laughs> yeah, like oh he, the time is now and the team barely make the playoffs. It's he just, only played one season. He played seventy six yeah. games. He's averaging seventeen and twelve. But that was like fake seventeen and twelve. No disrespect. It went like <laughs> seventeen and twelve sounds amazing. But if you were watching, that's that was you. not amazing. I feel you. That's like absolutely. Just, if accurate. we got Chris Paul then. Oh Chris man, Paul. don't even get me started. You I'm gonna sound like, yeah, like a fan. Yeah. No. Um. We're gonna take. A break and hear a word from our sponsor, but after we're gonna do the X Factor for every playoff team.
Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. All right, man, so it's getting to that time of the year um, where we're getting closer and closer to the playoffs. And I wanted to discuss with y'all the biggest swing factors slash X factors for every um, playoff team. So I did one through 10, 10 seeds, mm-hmm. um, including the play-in. So I wanted to see what were y'all thoughts on who y'all think, or it may even, even got to be a person. It could be a stat or a coach or something like that. So for me, I'm going to start with the Milwaukee Bucks, top of the East. I mean, top of the West, East. They're not at the top of the East. Can we, can, we, yeah, can we start in order? <laughs> yeah, Wait, let's start with the Celtics. On? I don't know why my list. I got to scratch my head. scratching your head. My out list, I started with the Bucks for some reason. For some reason. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> yeah. oh, John, for I some reason. Bucks. I have an idea. But uh, for the Celtics, I have Kristaps Porzingis. Um, we know what he brings to the table when you talk about being able to stretch the floor. But if he could consistently give them like that good 20 and allow that other team center to have to come out of the paint, I think that's, that's, that just opens up the game so much more for Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. And it's just, it's just a weapon that they haven't had the luxury of having. Um, when you, especially when you're talking about they can have that big lineup of him and Al Horford, where they both can sit in the corners, or Porzingis at the top, where they can both stretch the floor. It just gives them so much more room to operate. Mm-hmm. I, I the I, same x Yeah, I've had, I had Chris Stubbs, too. I think with this Boston Celtics team, just, he's just so much more than just, like, space it out and kick it to him for three, like – they they need a lot of that in between game and a lot of his size, a lot of his defense. But on nights he can become they they top scorer. They yeah. they they're number one player. So I think the importance of him and like one him at least be, uh, being healthy, and then two just being able to consistently do it in the playoffs. Like that's their their bridge to like we we you can't mess with us. Yeah, I put Joe Missoula. Oh, uh, Missoula got to use his timeouts. Has to use his timeouts. <laughs> it's one of the big that ones. comes back to it. Then that's just a problem. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. it happened in the playoffs last it year. It did. Yeah. Um, and his roster's better. I think he's been better at it this year. Yeah. But there has been times, like even in that Cavs game we referred to earlier, where Dean Wade turned into um, Dwayne Wade. Uh, he didn't use his timeouts there. Last night I was half watching, so I don't know what his timeout management was in that thirty-point comeback. So I can't tell you. But there are times where, yeah, you just want him to be a little bit more engaged when the other team is on another run, and that's just like a piece of the coaching stuff. Um, I do look at some of the other coaches that he's got to go through to get there, and I'm like, who's the better coach? I'm usually taking the other coach, uh, but he's got the overwhelming talent. Yeah. So it might not yeah. matter. But if he turns think, to like a solid coach to a really good coach in the playoffs, the team is going to be unbeatable. I'm yeah. going to agree with you, too, because I I look at the other coaches, too, and I'm like, it might be worth that timeout. Because like during the regular season, when you're going through all these games and the other teams on a run, it's like, you know, we're the number one seed in the East. We're, you know, finals bound and everything like that. I'll let my guys handle this while they're just on the other run. You can't do that no more in the playoffs when yeah. these other teams and other coaches and you got, you're going against games, Spo man. and stuff like that. So it's just you got to be on your best. Everybody do. His first round matchup might be Eric Spolster. Which we you know Spo spoken out coach uh, ass. Yes, real he will. quick. Yes, he will. Uh, next team, the um, Milwaukee Bucks. For me, I have Doc Rivers. Um, they fired Adrian Griffin to bring in you, and I feel like they felt like Adrian Griffin wasn't the guy that can get them over a the hump. They trusted you to be the guy that can get them over the hump. And throughout history, Doc Rivers, except for that 2008 championship, he hasn't been a guy that can get over the hump. He's blown multiple 3.31 leads. Um, and he seems like a guy that can also not make adjustments and do things to not avo- to avoid blowing a 3-1 lead. So I just think that this is a weird year for them where he had to come in post-All-Star, and now he has to get them to the championship, which is every year for them when they have Giannis, it's championship or bust. Uh my X factor is Chris Middleton. Mm. I like that. Just one. to finally get him healthy. Um, he is starting to look a lot better. He, he looks really good. He is. But triple you know, third triple double of his career a couple nights ago. Yep. They they get that in the playoffs. Um another another defender. Um and yeah, another guy who can be a perimeter threat. We we know what Chris Middleton can Middleton can, can do. do. It's all star level. Yeah. And ain't no doubt in that. Whenever he's on the floor, Chris Middleton is pretty, 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 pretty damn good. And I just think that uh they need that. So I'm just happy to see him back healthy. They'll have him for the playoffs. That's my that's really my X factor because yeah. I feel like I, this team don't really have an X. It's kind of like the Celtics. I, I, I really I, forced it with the Chris Stapps pick. But yeah. I'm not going to sit up here and tell y'all I'm in League B is the X factor. It's not. 
Mm-hmm. It's I put not. I put name for honestly. I feel like they literally they're at their best and like what we expect them to be. When Damian Lillard is being the All NBA player, he kind of was in Portland. We've seen him sometimes take a little step back because he still wants to like, you know, he doesn't he don't want to step on no toes. But he, like we said with the other teams, he has to understand that this is his team too, alongside Giannis. And for them to get to where they want to go, he has to be All NBA, which I mean, he I think he could do. That's so. why I'm sad that. that Jan is not playing tonight, man. This is a big game. LeBron, I no LeBron. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah, LeBron's not playing because it's a big game for the uh, the Milwaukee Bucks. Right? I mean, I know, I know the for, Lakers are not yeah. the best team out west, but it's just like another competitive ass team. The Lakers chilling. They we need happy. that win yeah, too. They, they happy the Warriors nah, falling. Yeah, yeah. The Lakers, the Lakers feel good because they like, man, that's the Warriors. Everybody talking about not us. We good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah it's that just, nice spot just not that pretty. Seventeen and two this season when Dame puts up thirty. Uh, by the way, so. I, you I said seven and two. Seventeen and two. Oh, uh, almost unbeatable. Um, but yeah, I agree with Pierre here. Chris Middleton, seventeen point seven net rating. With all three of them on the court together, six hundred and seventy minutes. Just need more minutes. Need more reps. And Chris Middleton, like Derek said, looks a lot better since coming back from his injury. Uh, next team is the Cleveland Cavaliers. I have the front court. Um, last year the lights were too bright. That's they. They literally got bullied in the paint last year um, by the Knicks. So this year, hopefully, we see something different. Isaac Okoro, um, he, his defense is so valuable for them that when he is shooting, if he can continue to shoot the ball in the playoffs how he is now, I think that, that they're, they're just going to be continue to be dangerous. Um, it's really him and, and Karis LeVert, but I, I just think that the way Isaac Okoro can defend and the teams that they'll have to go through, whether it's my Knicks with Brunson, whether it's the Celtics, it's so many different teams that's going to have these offensive weapons. And I think being able to trust and put him out there yep. for long periods of time um, while being able to knock down his three-point shot at a respectable rate is, is just big time. Is he ever going to be a guy that's just going to be lights out? No. But I think when you defend that well, when you are able to knock down your shots, whether it's a few of them, <laughs> whether you have a game where they give you a bunch of them, if you just make them at enough that you're not harming the team on offense – then I think, you know, that just puts you in a good – almost like Lou Dort. You know, yeah. Lou Dort ain't no damn Kyle Corver, but mm-hmm. that 40% yeah. is a badge I'm, of honor that he can I'm wear. I'm really stuck in between – because I already put down Jared, Jared Allen, yeah. but I was in between him and Isaac Okoro. But I'm going to stay with Jared Allen because I think the, the points – it's nice for him to be able to, like – he's having 15 to 20-point games, like, regularly, and I think that's pretty cool to have. But we've seen them be successful and look good with either of their backcourt mates. Like, whether Garland was there, whether Donovan Mitchell was there. But I think it's the the difference is, like, even with the spacing, Jared Allen has evolved that offensive game where he can make a lot of those short roll passes. He had a very nice pass the other day where it was just like he caught the ball in the short roll and then it kind of trapped the pick and roll, and he just lobbed it up to Emo. And it was just like that. that's simple plays. It's like that's like connection with the Jokic and Aaron Gordon that's going to help you when it's like all everybody's kind of, like, shrinking the floor and daring y'all to shoot. I'm sure that happened a lot. Were you talking about last night? Yeah. It was like one of the first plays of the game. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Because that was one of those – I think it was the first night, the yep. first game of the night, and it yep. was a bad game. It was like Hornets versus Cavs. Yeah. But it was the first game, so you just have it on. Yep. And I remember seeing that like, yeah, okay, okay. Jared Allen is a really – like, like creeping on the baseline. Jared Allen for the is a really nice – I really like the pass, and he's kind yeah. of brought this season. Uh, my, my one was Karis LeVert. Yeah. Uh, no, Karis LeVert, his mm-hmm. scoring has not been amazing recently, but he's having like some of the best playmaking of his career. Yes, defense. he is. Um, yeah. And yeah, they're putting, he's always been a guy that had the ball in the sand. He's kind of like a dribble, dribble, dribble guy. But now he's really finding others. And I know some of that's going to turn down when Donovan Mitchell comes back, obviously. But for him not to be so one dimensional opens up the door a lot more for what they could potentially want to do. Yeah, he was definitely a guy that was like looked at as just like a hot, like a high volume chucker. Yeah, in and this run. When he gets hot, you're like, okay, it's a Karis Ver game. But like when he. When he ain't got it going, I was like, what else can Karis LeVert do for him? His so. playmaking and his defense has been, been there for him. Yeah. The last 13 games, he's averaging eight assists per, and that's including one game where he had one because he only played 20 minutes. So if you take that one game out, I mean, he's averaging like almost nine assists a game in his last six. So yeah. that's that's pretty damn dope. Oh, th- I'm sorry, last 13. Uh, next team is the New York Knicks. Uh, I have Josh Hart. Um, mm-hmm. Josh Hart is a guy that just puts pressure on the other teams. Uh, smaller players who probably ain't used to defending guys like him who are going to crash off as the boards. He's a dude that is a very good playmaker. He's been, you know, he's Josh Hart just does a lot of different things on the court that just opens up so much for everybody. And I think he's just one of those guys that he just put, he's one of those guys that put the battery in your back. Like he just plays with that energy and that tenaciousness that just, it's contagious to the team and you can feel it. 
Shout out to Josh Hart for yeah. uh, Ben Monte Williams know that he is a damn fool for what he was saying yesterday. But anyway, um, what I miss? What did he say? Monte Williams went up to the podium acting like the Knicks did something bad because Dante DiVincenzo made 11 threes. Oh. And Josh Hart was like, well, he should have did something about it. He, <laughs> his coach's guys to defend. Yeah. The hell's the NBA? Nobody, you think yeah. they're going to not? Man, he was like, the way they was getting those threes, I'm, I'm not talking about their team. Like, they cheated or something. Like, it was, <laughs> it was the most weird shit I've ever seen. The way they got those threes, um, I'm not talking about <laughs> Crazy. But anyway, um, my X fact is health. Yeah. <laughs> the dude health. Man, health. When health walks through that door, he's going to put up some numbers for the Knicks. Yes. Y'all having he, such a When green. health walked through that door, he's going to get the best green ever. He's going to have food ready <laughs> for him. <laughs> Bro, I, this is a team I was like, I really don't know what to put because, I mean, like, the, the players that are playing right now, it's like, I don't think they really belong in that category yet because we haven't seen them, like, full, full health. But, man, I don't don't want to put on Jalen Brunson because we know what Jalen Brunson going to do. It's more so, like, maybe OG or Julius, but we kind of waiting for them to get back. And Julius Randle still so, has yeah. no time. They will That's why I put, I put Randle. Yeah. yeah. Is he Who playing else? or is he not? Kevin Herter just dislocated his shoulder, too. Yeah. That's all. Is he playing or is he not? Uh, the next team is the Magic. I have Franz three point shooting. Um, the three point shooting for Franz has been down this year by a lot. He's shooting twenty nine percent from three. Um, if somehow by playoff time he can get it rolling, he got a rhythm. They could be a very fun, very fun team. I'm not saying that this X factor is gonna propel them to conference finals or something, but you know they can definitely be a threat. They shoot thirty percent from three as a team, bro. Yeah, they <laughs> everything everything else is cool like rebound, their defense, yeah, steals, the yeah. slot. They can't shoot the ball, and yeah, I would like if they front, if they front, had like an extra, three point shooters. they had an extra five percent on that, they'd probably be yeah happy as hell thinking they can get out the first 40, round. That percentage is so yeah. Is my my X factor was the three point shooting. They just been struggling with. It's been hindering their team, so I think that's got to be the 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 main ordeal for them. I got Jonathan Isaac save. Oh, Jonathan Isaac just had a game recently. I mean, he was so damn He had 25 good. against the yes. Kings, but they lost that game. I was so sad. I mean, the <sighs> he had a, a turnaround baseline jump shot in yeah. the first quarter. I'm like, that's John Isaac. On the broadcast, <sighs> he made his seventh field goal. They said that's the most field goals he's made since 2019. Seven. It was just this many. <laughs> Seven. When he got it's it crazy. going, man, this, this, this team is different. When he, because he just adds you so much versatility too. The defense the is, is one of the best. Yes. Yes. The, yes. Can protect the rim. The stops. He just, yeah. The rebound. The rebound. All five positions. The, the shooting. Jonathan oh. Isaac is by far the X factor. Yeah, for me. yeah. it's not even close. Yep. Jonathan Isaac. You put him on anybody in the league. Yes. and expect them to have a tough night. <laughs> but he he still being six ten and being able to hide that is crazy. He can only play. I think it's six to eight minute increment increments. Like, even the game before that, um, he played his six minutes, and he, like, pulled an ick joke where he, he called a timeout himself because he was gassed. Oh. Like, he was on his knees. And I, I see that because he's going 100. Yeah. He's going 100 and um, on both sides of the ball. So, he's Russell my Russell be going 100 with his whiskey. He's just different. I'm he don't got him. <laughs> some, some, some people got Russ that just in have. Him. He charged up yeah. every time he on the bench. He just yeah. plug himself we in. We could play Russ 40 minutes, and he going to still have the same energy he played when he was in minute two. What he plug it into? <laughs> he plug it into oh, – he wow. got a special thing in his back. Oh, and this is back. Okay. <laughs> you ain't my answer. <laughs> Ask the question again. What he plug it into? Kawhi. What's the next team, Derek? Because Kawhi rolled by two. Yeah. <laughs> they just charge each other. <laughs> hey, brother. <laughs> uh, the Indiana Pacers, Aaron E. Smith. I said the same thing. There we go. In sync. Like Justin like Timberlake. Justin Timberlake. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx, you owe me a soda. All right, bro. Oh, you drank it all. <laughs> Who you go, KB? Uh, I went Tyrese. I went Tyrese too. It's, it feels weird because the X Factor oh. probably should never be like the, best, the player, best player. But he also obviously hasn't been when playing I, when to I his was, caliber. Uh, my bad to cut you off. When I was thinking about the X, fa- X Factors, I was, was kind of thinking about, like, what's going to take you to the level you want to get to. And it's got to be, like, Tyrese is a whole engine of the team. Mm-hmm. So they, they need him to be where, like, they need him to be elite, honestly. Yeah, he's, the shooting's been shaky. I mean, it's up and down recently. He's had some ga- good games, but then he's also had some bad games. So I don't, I don't know what the 
he's going to have to figure it out. And hopefully he does figure it out by the time the first round come around. Yeah. Uh, I just say Aaron D. Smith because I just love the energy, the hustle he brings to them, the yeah. way he can shoot the basketball. He defends the other teams' best players. Yeah, he's just – He's exactly what they need um, as they gear and get ready for the playoffs. So, yeah. Uh, the next team on the list is the Miami Heat. I have Terry Rozier slash Duncan Robinson. I, I have Terry Rozier as well. I have Terry Rozier I shooting. I scary Terry. Yeah. Yo, so we I all just, they need I, that I, offensive I, punch. <laughs> yeah, they do. Like, that's yeah. why I put Duncan Robinson in there, too, because if by playoff time they can get some sort of jolt offensively from both of them, this team could become scary again. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, mean, I completely agree. I mean, Terry Rozier has not been as advertised since coming over. Yeah. So if they can get him to look like that 95% of that player, 90% of that player, I think the opinions of the Heat just shift. Do y'all do y'all do y'all think it do y'all think it has something to do with the fact that he came over there ready to be something that he's not? Saying that I'm gonna be a defender again like 2018. Yeah, he was and, so ready to buy into some shit of what they do, but they need some of what he does. We need you to less be Miami yeah. and be Charlotte. We, defensively, we cool. We yeah. got that. But <laughs> let, let me see you chuck some shots and them go in, please. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would, that would definitely I just think he just needs that stretch of games where it's like, okay, I'm back. You know what I'm saying? I feel like he's had so many rough games. And it's, it's 11 like, games yeah. left. He better turn it on. He just need one of them playoffs, games. Robinson was a big joke for them. Yes. As a scorer, you just need one of them games. It's like, I'm back. Yeah. Well, he's had some good games. He had a stretch of – a few games ago, in the fourth quarter, he scored like 11 in 90 seconds yes, or something like that. Yeah. Him and Jimmy like closed out the game really good. And like, he has yeah. those moments. He just had to put it all together on a consistent basis. Um, the next team is the 76ers. I have Tobias Harris or Tob Joel Embiid's yeah, knee. Tobias I Harris. have Joel. I literally have Joel Embiid's <laughs> knee. <laughs> <laughs> those are the two things that I have now. Yeah. The one. The one thing, uh, kind of a tangent. I'm watching this team. What did they? What did they do to Buddy Hill, man? Yeah. How are they not using one of the greatest shooters of all time the right way? They need somebody else to create and play. It is night and day between what Buddy was doing with the Pacers versus what he's doing with the well, Celtics. But I would say with Joel and B back, I think it is a little bit of a different look though, mm -hmm. too. And because it's so much yeah. interior presence. He I also had he played with De'Aaron Fox. He also has played with Tyrese Halliburton. So like now he's playing with Tyrese Maxey. He's those oh those other two guys are different though. Oh, like as shots, in like no no shots. no I'm just saying like they're much better playmakers they're better at finding we, guys is De'Aaron Fox a much better I playmaker? was gonna say I, Tyrese Halliburton three, is the better even, not even now two years ago De'Aaron Fox better playmaker than Tyrese Maxey I think it's close but I think much that, better but I also think he yeah, awarded the much better but yeah, De'Aaron Fox De'Aaron Fox's gravity when he's getting down to the paint like he's such a I don't know he, I think he just attracts more attention. Shit, I don't know if anybody get more attention than Tyrese Maxey on a nightly basis well, not, right now. Well, on that team, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> Tyrese Maxey is seeing two to three bodies on uh, every time he suit up. Uh, but Shit, do not sound like a good time, bro. <laughs> do not. <laughs> but guess what he did last game? Turned up. Dropped 29. He did. Game before that, 24, 27. Then he had a, he had six. <laughs> The six is it's hard rough. to get off sometimes. When you got y'all remember when they was yeah. like, "What you?" Uh, he was on the bench and he had like, I think he had like thirty points too. He's like, "What y'all want me to do?" Because they were still down like fifteen <laughs> twenty. <laughs> the Chicago Bulls. Mm. I got Big Vooch. I got Kobe White. Yeah. I, I got Io. We, we get into the part of the the, the ladder. Yeah, let's get the, 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 it won't the happen. Out, it won't happen out west though. Yeah, because yeah. those matter. Uh, yeah. I put Vooch as well. I put uh, Io, and then for the Hawks, I put DeAndre Hunter. Yep. Look, look at the difference. Oh, I put Vic Craigie. Look at the difference. <laughs> Vic Craigie. But he East, turns up. For the East, it's just names and shit. Yeah. You go out West, it's notes and all day. Out West busting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Out West, West busting. You know what I mean? How would uh, you know, Dare? Yeah, you How from out South. Oh, y'all funny. <laughs> Mike closer to Out West than you are. Yeah. He is. He on that good side. He one of the good ones. <laughs> 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 uh, then the Hawks. I had Bogdanovich. Yeah, next next conference, please. Uh, He's still on. <laughs> nobody, everybody else. I said Vic Craigie. Oh, you did? Okay. I uh, second Vic Craigie. I said DeAndre Hunter. <laughs> okay, good, good, good. I heard that he is one and zero when trailing by, down by thirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. That's him definitely yeah, down thirty yeah, I was before. About to say. <laughs> Out west, we got the Denver Nuggets. I got Michael Porter Jr. Michael Porter Jr. Just the year that he's having has been so good. The three point shooting has been phenomenal, um, and as long as he's doing that. I just don't see many, many teams beating them. Uh, I feel like I trust everything else around them. I went, 
I went Peyton Watson. Honestly, their starting five is golden. Yeah. Like, yeah, you ain't got to worry about them. I'm honestly just worried about, like, what the bench kind of looks like. Yeah, Peyton I think Watson, Christian Brown I, is I like that. Good. He's just so young. I didn't want yeah, to I, I, I I put that expectation on him at such a young age. I don't think he changes, age, changes like, as much. Mm-hmm. Young guys typically don't really help you in championships. He, he'll help, but I don't want to put him at he, – he, they must. Yeah. They must get something from Peyton Watson. Hey, Christian Brown had that one game in the finals, man. They didn't yeah. need that. They was going to be Michael. <laughs> uh, my X Factor is Michael Porter Jr. too. Yeah. Um, when he has 25 or more, they're 11 and 2. They're undefeated when he scores 30 or more. So – Give me Michael Porter Jr. What's the record? I was like about to say, it's like one, six, <laughs> How, what's, what's the, the record? record for when he dropped four, thirty? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he only had thirty-four times the season, but they, you know, that's still that, good. That's he's a cherry on top. I just hope he don't get distracted by his gambling as brother. <laughs> that's got a lot of stuff going on. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's gonna shift. Uh, my my guy was Aaron Gordon's jump shot specifically. Mm-hmm. Like we talked about how lethal he is as a cutter and how lethal he is at the basket. If somehow that he can have a three-week stretch where the jump shot is hitting again. GGs. There's no, there's literally nothing you could do on the offensive side of the ball, and they don't need it. But if they got it, it's kind of nasty. It's kind of nasty. Uh, the next team we got is Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, I have Lou Dort. Um, Lou, just because he's shooting forty percent from three in the playoffs, teams are gonna test that. Mm-hmm. They gonna really see is that a real forty percent, or you it was just just a regular season thing? Because a lot of times we do see guys and teams have this sort of identity in the regular season. They get to the playoffs, and that identity is a little shaky. So. I'm interested to see if Lou Dork could continue to shoot at that 40% clip. And if he does, it seems, oh, my God. Yeah, right. It's, 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 it's going to be hard to defend him at a playoff level. Yeah, I got Lou Dork, too. I'm a firm believer in that pressure. Doobie definitely gets up there, too, when it's the playoffs, and it's not that you're just catching an open three. Yes. Your team needs you to knock down that three. I don't three. know the openness rate of his threes, but it seems like a lot of them are high. Like, he's he shoots a lot of open threes. Some of them open threes be the got, hardest. Baby? Uh, I just want to say you saw about the pressure, right? You mentioned pressure. Uh, Lou Dort, game seven. He puts him in the company oh of only LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. Do not forget what he did in game seven. I remember seven. that game specifically. <laughs> Me too. He, he took had 21 dreads. shots he had because like he little, was wide open the whole yeah, game. Like, he, he just had like a little, little twist. They was bro. barely sitting. Uh, I got Lou Dort as well. Uh, I went. I went with Chet Holmgren because I just watched them play against the Bucks a couple nights ago. Oh yeah, and they went at his chest every time. Is just um, That's and, what the Lakers gonna do. And he's gonna <laughs> go against some good bigs, right? Yes. And then he, he's got to hold his own. It's gonna be tough for him, but he's a good defender. I trust it. But that's gonna be the determining factor. If it yeah. is the Lakers, then tough. <laughs> If it is Minnesota, then tough. If it's the Nuggets, yeah. then tough. But like that's cool. Got, <laughs> next year we'll be playing next to Nick Clarkson. Possibly. Uh, that, would, that would definitely nah, take a lot of pressure it. off. Ja, he's going to be it. with the Grizzlies. Yeah, like I, I do got my money on the Grizzlies getting him. Yeah. For sure. I, w- I would agree with that. Or uh, the Nets paying him $150 million for why the, the hell? Why the hell would they do that? Because it's the Nets. <laughs> why the hell would they do that? They could have got Jalen Green. Jalen Green could be doing his stretch with them right now, putting them back into the play-in. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Marks ain't been on his, uh, his shit lately. Uh, next team we got is the Minnesota Timberwolves. I got Jaden McDaniels. Um, Jaden McDaniels without Cat, he's looked like a different player. He's, offensively, he's coming around a little bit better. Is he? I would say so. He's oh, had some pretty good I, games. I, I, he has some really bad ones, too. Yeah, he has. But I think you're seeing him take shots that he normally wouldn't have taken when he's playing with Cat. I agree. I, I, I had Jaden Mc, I, I, I was going to agree. I had Jaden McDaniels. But then I, I decided, I said, let, let me look into it a little bit. Mm-hmm. And since Cat been gone, his numbers are actually dropping. I yes, mean, his, his, his points is going up because I yeah. got default, but he's actually not taking this ad- opportunity. 25% from three in this stretch. Field goal percentage dropped, three point shit dropped. Like 50% from free throw. So I, I, I'm going to kill Alexander Walker because his shit has gone up gradually. Not nothing major, but it's going up. And he's using the opportunity to really get him a spark. So I'm going to kill Alexander Walker because I. I I don't know. I don't think Jaden McDaniels is, is a bad pick because if yeah. he does get it going, then I, I would like to see that. I definitely thought that there was a bag of offense for him to tap into, but uh, I feel the, like you see a lot more flashes of it now. Now that he he's had a he's had a couple of big shots, which I was kind of thinking like too, because you know late in game how they always had their struggles, and I was agreeing to the point that like without Cat, that was the whole like best thing about Cat is a lot of times late in game they didn't have the best offense. So when Ant Man was getting doubled, he was in trouble. Kick it to Cat, he could make a great play. Without that, it's like now we got to kind of toss it to Rudy. We got to toss it to Con. Like they can make plays, but Cat was their best option. Now it's kind of like Jaden McDaniels feels like those guy, or feels like the guy who kind of ends up with the ball a lot of times late in the game. And he's taking crazy shots, but he's made some big ones too. Uh, my X factor was Nasri. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, I, uh, I trust their defense in the playoffs. They're going to need offensive punch. Nas Reed has been exactly that, yes, especially yeah. during this current stretch. And they just need that to continue. Nas Reed. Uh, the <laughs> next guy, I mean, not next guy, but the next team is the New Orleans Pelicans. I have CJ McCollum. Uh, he's a great guy when you're talking about down the stretch of games. <laughs> he's a great guy. Huh? He's uh, a great guy. President of the... The NBA play. There you go. NBA PA. Yeah. Yeah. My boy. He's just a guy that can just relieve some of the pressure down the stretch of games for BI and um, Zion because he's such a great shot creator. He can just make so many different plays for himself or others. And it just can open up the door for a lot of things. I got Trey Murphy the third. Same. I like that. He's young. He's hungry. He's ready. He has an opportunity with, with Brandon Ingram out. Um, and it's, just, it's time for him to go out there and snatch that. And show these people who he is, man. I, Trey Murphy the third. I've been high on Trey Murphy the third since the draft. You yeah. have. It's the steal of that draft. And I'm sick to my stomach because I think they <laughs> took him before our Knicks pick. And I know, I believe in my Knicks that we was going to draft that young man and that brother. Because you know why? That brother can ball. <laughs> <laughs> I was that at Trey Murphy ball. on my list. Oh, okay. Uh, I was going to put CJ, though. But Trey, I, Trey Murphy for me as well. Next thing we got is the Los Angeles Clippers. I just got Russell Westbrook. I just think they need his energy. That's that's kind of the main thing that they're missing, that gritty, that toughness. A guy that's going to be out there with that, ah, that energy. They need that. They they don't need those the two cool wings that they got. They need that fire hydrant. I agree with everything my man said. I went Paul George. The best version of Paul George elevates this team. When he's not having a good game, you feel it across the entire team. I mean, they rely on him a bunch. And he's got wavering playoff success and ups and peaks and valleys. And when the playoff time, if we get the really good version of PG, then I feel okay about it. But if we get every other game PG, then yeah. it's, it's going to be tough for them. Yeah, he, for some of those same reasons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I went with Paul George, too. And I think you can look at the point guard play. Obviously, they got James Harden. I can't, at this point, I'm not expecting James Harden <laughs> to take off in the playoffs. It's just you. like if he can be consistent, that's beautiful. Yeah. But they also have other options, too. And I'm sure Tyron Lue, if he sees like – you know, we're really not getting the best out of James. Russell's been doing – I'm sure he will honestly make the subs. I think it's on, like, PG to – PG and Kawhi, but more specifically PG to be, like, they need to elevate their play. You know, it can't be the same things that's happened the last couple of years. James Harden needs a good playoff series because, it's like, he needs to get that extension. He wants to get paid. And this is one of those moments where, like, this is where you got to show what's, what is your true value. The extension right. stuff is interesting because Paul George ain't signed yet. Yeah. Um which I just knew and he, he would, was. He would be the number one player on the free agent market. Now, it's oh. not a ton of teams with a bunch of money, but Philly got Philly, money. Yeah. So, Philly would be cool. Uh, we'll see. Oh, Indiana got money, It would be too? different from L.A. He's not going back to Indiana. I, I, <laughs> I talked to him. Well, they're they're going to extend Pascal. And I so talked to PG. I, I talked to PG on a regular basis. He's not going there. <laughs> <laughs> he said he don't like the way they don't they don't uh, plow their streets when it's snow. No, he really said that he cannot believe that across from the arena that there's a the Arby's. And a sub, I think they built that because of him. That's what he asked for. Oh, no. Nah. They ain't built shit for him. That's what he told me. That is, that is crazy that across the street is a, <laughs> an Arby's. Well, Arby's White Castle yes. is that way. Yes, it is. That's actually crazy. Didn't you tell me Arby's was decent, though? Arby's is solid. I remember Pierre said he had their chicken wrap. He said it was good. It was, I made a chicken wrap yesterday. It was so good that I got oh another God. one. I, was like, I ain't walked I into Arby's, Arby's in years. <laughs> huh? I ain't even walked into an Arby's Because you years. do drafter. Oh, you know what I had recently? <laughs> What? Slim Chickens. Oh, that rap is the best. Slim Chickens is a hit. I it don't that. make music, but it rap. Yeah. <laughs> I started putting egg whites on everything. Just to increase I tried egg protein. whites. I do not like it. It doesn't taste like anything. That's it's, it's, I, it's one of those things I just can't do. Pepper, I like, haven't had I don't even do that. I don't like it. Because oh, like, you can't taste it. it. Yeah, it don't have no flavor. That's why. Oh, yeah. that's why and maybe that's why. But he's a guy that also don't drink water. Cause they don't have no, no, that's my homie. <laughs> that's but we ain't finna- <laughs> Why you gotta say it now? <laughs> but no, nah, I think that's the thing. Right, yeah. <laughs> p- p- piss the same that color day. as the defensive player hey. of the year trophy. <laughs> At home. <laughs> Drink water. <laughs> like I, I've never been able to compute how people can say it don't taste. Thank you, Derek. It tastes. It nasty. don't taste good. It's 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 not supposed. To, everything is in life does not have to be flavored. Water do hit though. It water is water hits point. every time. And yeah. your body's made of mostly water. How is your, so you're depleting John, your body. How is your piss the same color as the Michael Jordan tro- statue in the United States? He said he don't drink water. He just get put the crystal light in it first. <laughs> oh my god! But you know what? I I heard somewhere that that's fine. 
if that you if think that still you, counts as water. That's intake. a damn shame. You got to do that every time. I, sometimes I do that, but every time I drink water, no. I only drink two liquids. It's water, and then it's these boy complex shakes that I boy. drink. That's it. <laughs> I ain't Boy. had a sip of juice. I ain't had a sip of pop. You scared me for other a than, second. Other than lemonade, I, I can't. I no, nah, I love me some lemonade, yeah, some lemonade. orange juice. I've been on. I've been drinking a lot of the diet pop. Mm. Uh, one of my I, doctors I asked me if I ever feel dehydrated. I said my piss hasn't had color in years, doc. He said, "I think you're doing good." Mm. Fuck out of here. <laughs> that's, that's 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 a real. I conversation. should need to have some color. I like because I, I, like I, I want to have a little flavor in my yeah. drinks. Yeah, it ain't got to be yeah. John's bronze defensive player of the year, <laughs> but I don't need it to be color. clear every time. It's clear, you wouldn't even know I went. I went pee in the toilet. To I don't flush? eat flush. No, <laughs> save the flush? environment. I mean, hey, that's true. That's disgusting. That's impressive to that only dr- have drinking water for only years. waters. You've never seen me drink a pop. No, no, no. I, I didn't say anything. Oh, okay. Why are you looking at me? It looked like you were like questioning that. <laughs> oh no 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 I, no no no! I'm with you every time you drink or something. <laughs> yeah. We go golfing. Water. Yeah, give me a water, please. You got Fiji. Yeah, take that. You got. Yeah, what you is your favorite Evian? water? It, it doesn't matter. I, I'm not a person that cares uh, about. You don't care about spring, If it's spring or not, nah, I don't give a damn. I don't uh, either. My mom used to do that. Yeah. It just gotta taste like water. Just long. Just don't, it, that Dasani taste. I don't really want that. But like anything. So you do care then. That's it. Because I will take it to some. Give me a pop. I would, I would, I would, I would, I would drink it if I'm thirsty, but like if I had to choose, I would want one of the waters that don't have it. Every flavor. flight I've ever been on has been Dasani. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, cool. Come on. Give me the water. So if y'all at the store, which one, which pack y'all grab? What's the cheapest? Yeah, I get oh, like, yeah. The, like the store brand. Store probably. brand. I get like the Pete's. I be getting usually. Yeah. Eh, That's when I'm buying a case. Get, it really don't matter. That's when I'm buying a case. I just get if a I'm case. buying like a bottle. Yeah. I'm, I'm usually getting Because a lot of times they be having water bottles on like the little end caps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They'll be like on sales. Not, so not be a like case. this I'm brand is $3.99. One, one yeah. I was about to say, Derek got Y'all ever heard of Mountain Valley? In the yeah. green? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The green glass bottle? I get those. If I'm buying like a bottle. I might Whole Foods, I get a couple of those. I call it a day. You know what I'm saying? I get a little chicken cutlet. We make a little. A gobble go. You know what I'm saying? I like Evian water. Evian water is too cool too. Hey, you like whatever the hell I give you to drink, all right? Tighten up, little man. Yes, sir. Beyond scared straight. Hey, comb his chest here. <laughs> <laughs> you ever seen that? Yes. <laughs> they need to bring he that show back. Too. For real. Put KB in there. Hey, drink this Gatorade, little man. <laughs> <laughs> Tired of your pissing here. Yeah. Hey, I'm we, almost 30. We, he goes, hey, hey, eat that cheese. <laughs> <laughs> eat that cheese. Eat that cheese. Bullets trying to kill me. <laughs> eat that cheese. Dip that big beef in that juice. <laughs> and not our juice. <laughs> well, you have to jump me before I eat some cheese. Eat that cheese is crazy. <laughs> they pinning them down, putting cheese fries in it. <laughs> DBL's over there looking like, damn, I wish I was him. <laughs> DBL's like, pin me down. <laughs> uh, never mind. DBL's like, pin me down right now. What team we on? Demon's like, I, he trying to use reverse psychology. <laughs> that would work for me. <laughs> <laughs> Hell no. Y'all, I, I, I would be going for that shit. <laughs> I would never, I would never do that to me. <laughs> Oh he putting on the bill while he's talking to him about it. I wish they would. <laughs> oh, man. One thing I ain't going for <laughs> if somebody put a big beef with cheese dip in a cheese. <laughs> ain't never. And I'm a really acting fool if it's a double bacon cheese version. <laughs> Over the daydreaming, watch it. Some guys have all the luck. <laughs> KB just having the worst time in his life. He just wishing that was him. He tapping out there, mate. You see this shit? He think he all that good. <laughs> <laughs> he think he all that because he got somebody feeding him. He talking about where they get that food from? I'm gonna tell the cafeteria they got food missing. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> Yo, he's like I wish Dick had did that to me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the next one is the Kings, bro. <laughs> Yo, the King. 
Kings. I, put, I got uh, Keegan Murray. Okay. Me too. Me too. <laughs> I went Keon Ellis. I'm under the assumption that uh, can, is Kevin everybody Herter. crying? Is every, oh, I'm crying. I'm, I'm crying. crying. Y'all made my eyes water. Uh, Kevin Herter's <laughs> probably not coming back. It's not been confirmed. Uh, Keon Ellis has been a 40 percent three point shooter on low volume this year. Another one of my draft. Uh, Steals. I love me for Keon me. Ellis. But also, teams don't guard him, so you want to see that transition. You know, <laughs> For sure. Um, that's all. I mean, I think some guys just aren't going to be guarded. Yeah, and that, you just, just got to make them pay. Pick yeah. your poison. Mm-hmm. Which is what we say when we're playing what? Pro-Am. Yeah. Yeah. You talking yeah. about me? Pick no, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look I'm not guarded. I, I like the Keon Ellis. He shot 12% last series. So, so. it should be you. But <laughs> I like no. the Keon Ellis pick. I, I like the defensive tenacity, too. Yeah, he, he always brings it. Yes. He always he got the fight it. to him. So Other than like that, that one play with Jalen Bronson. Y'all remember that? Yes. He, he was looking for a screen and Jalen Bronson just went right past him. That was so embarrassing, bro. To fall for a fake... And then that that is crazy, How bro. You and know then what? his facial expression when he yeah. like it was like, like an animated yes, show. Yeah, it was like really, like really that's why Jaden somebody Bron- should edit that. That's somebody why Jalen Bronson is so forward thinking because yes. he did it the first time, but he was serious the first and time. Dude, and he looked. looked, and so he like yeah. It, it's a mind game. Your point guard ain't doing that. Damian Lillard talking about something. <laughs> well, if I got Giannis setting me a screen, I want to come set that. Please do. Yeah. Uh, Next dude is not next dude. Bronson will be better with Giannis. The Mavericks. I have Tim Hardaway Jr. Mm. Tim Hardaway Jr. is such a such a volume three point shooter, but when they fall in, man, does he open up the game? He just the game just becomes so much easier because now Kyrie and Luca ain't got to do that much, and he's one of those dudes. Oh, that they can, still got to do a lot, D. Millie. He do, but they do. But when he's giving you that good 20, 20 plus, and he's just Cherry knocking down threes, it's just like. Now Luca don't have to get forty point triple double. He get a thirty point triple double. Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> that's um, so bad. Like, what do you got to do? I uh, <laughs> I got Daniel Gafford slash Derek Lively. I got, I got the same thing. I got interior. I got the interior. I got the same. I feel like we've seen like the results of what what the trades have done. Like with yeah. Gafford, with PJ, with PJ Washington, we're still waiting for that that shot to fall. But they they definitely needed all that size and length. They're still. Uh, they're getting better with their ability to protect the rim, block shots, and I think that lets them get out and transition a little bit easier instead of having to uh, work in the half court. The most confusing yeah. team, man, because they, now they rolling again. Yes. And and then they went on a streak before that where they were struggling. Now, then they roll it again. It's just like they just need to be on one of those highs when the playoff hit. That's all. That's why Tim Hardaway Jr. could be one of those dudes that could just like – if he could just give them that consistent punch of offense. They don't really – it's hard for them to find guys who can consistently knock down the three ball. And mm-hmm. Tim Hardaway Jr., if he's consistently knocking it down, it just makes them, the defense have to really respect him. That's, that's why I'm so mad P.J. Washington not knocking it down. Like, he's been shooting very bad mm-hmm. for the And when the he Mavericks. get it going, he can. Yeah. The next team, the Phoenix Suns. I got Bradley Beal. I got Bradley Beal. Bradley Beal. Unanimous? I got Grayson Allen. Oh, I thought oh, about, he been I, hooper. I, I, that's I why, that's I why I think it, Allen, they need him to keep it, it up. Keep it up, yeah. Imagine he hit his first down spark of the whole season when playoff this time play, come around. My, I got a question for all of y'all. Mm-hmm. I put Bradley Beal, dot, dot, dot. What's his role? What is Bradley Beal for the Suns? I feel like he just kind of duplicates to a lesser extent what kind of D-Book kind of does. Like, he does a little oh, bit. Hell no. To a very lesser extent. Hell, yeah, yeah. You got to be the no. lessest of the lessest. That's why I said, I, I mean, it's already said and done, but it's anything. like Bradley Beal wasn't, they didn't need Bradley Beal, but they kind of work with him now. So he gets in where he fits in. He play makes a little bit. I think he's been having games where he's had like over seven, uh, eight assists. He can score the ball still, still gets 15 to 20, and he rebounds a little bit. I think you that's know, he part gets in where the, he, he fits in. The part of the problem that they have overlapping roles. Yeah. Um, I don't have an answer to that question, though, <laughs> just because I don't know. I literally yeah. don't know. I think you said the question again, what's his role? Mm-hmm. I uh, think it's really to alleviate what we kind of seen last year because it was just all KD, D book throughout the whole game. They had to save the day, but they needed that one more person and they trying to get to be Bradley Beal. So I was seeing that that's kind of the role I would expect. Yeah, I, I think that playoff series last year, you did see them kind of like D book and KD try to like go toe to toe. Um, and like they was like, damn, we need that third guy, and that's what made them rapidly go out there and get that trade done. But so far, it ain't really working. Because like right now, they're gonna go against the Nuggets or OKC. I know they're more favorite. They would much rather play OKC. Um, and now they're. Oh, I, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Play in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're the AC right now. Yep, yep, they are. Unless they jump, I don't. Anything's it, possible. It, it all, all could switch. Mm-hmm. The Lakers may climb. 
We never know. Bro, we just right. we went game. We just how much, can't catch up. How much how much of a gap is between the Lakers and the Suns? Two and a half games. See, I mean, depending on how bad the but Suns it, are, it's yeah. manageable. Every time we win a game, the other Dallas wins. Yeah. Suns pick up a game. You know, everybody above us just keeps winning. And it's like, okay, that's cool, but we can't catch up. Uh, the next team is the Los Angeles Lakers. I got D'Lo slash Austin Reeves. Yep. I got D'Angelo De- Russell just because th- the team has, I guess, scoring variety now <laughs> uh, since the break, which is weird because they were a bad offensive team before the Not break. One of Great the top defensively. Ones. Now it's the exact opposite. Bet one of the best offenses, one of the worst defenses. Uh, Austin Reeves is playing so good. Yeah, and that's why I, having that variance where it's not all LeBron, it's not all Anthony Davis yeah. goes a long way. This 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 one gonna surprise y'all. Anthony Davis. Hmm. Anthony Davis has been phenomenal this year. Anthony Davis has been outstanding, and I just want Anthony Davis to continue to be that way. But specifically, controlling the paint. They are fourteen and five when Anthony Davis has fifteen or more rebounds. Just wanted to dominate. Yeah. Just continue to dominate. I think I said this like a couple of years ago that Anthony Davis, he's one of my favorite players because he got the skill set to to be like a 25-point scorer, dude, all that type of stuff. He also has the motor and just the tools to be a hard hat guy that can average 25 points the same. Like, that's what I love about Anthony Davis. And a lot of that is he's not like settling for a crazy amount. He's been hitting his jumper too, but it's not he's not settling for those kind of like rough shots, he's beating people up in that paint. He he's getting a to. lot of easy looks. He needs yeah. to because the 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 when I looked into it, they are more better when he is focusing on that hard hat. Yeah, they are eight and nine when he has thirty or more. So yeah. like him trying mm-hmm. to go out there and be the leading scorer, that shit ain't really resulting into wins. At least not in the regular season. Who knows? Maybe in the I playoffs. wonder what the variance is with like LeBron in those games. Like is LeBron LeBron super? Passive in those games. Like, I know you don't have more. the answer, but yeah, yeah. No, for when, sure. when Anthony Davis is doing that, that's, like, yeah, that's that's a, that's a, that's interesting. For but sure. that 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 one clip where D'Lo passes LeBron the ball and he passes the back leg, dude, yeah. I love that clip for sure. That was one of D'Lo's best that games clip. this year. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. they we need D'Lo for sure. Is this who a, y'all expected? D'Lo. D'Lo. Yeah. I think we had our best when he's knocking down that three for ball, sure. bro. When, I, when y'all on foul without him, y'all just got your first win uh, the other day without him. Mm-hmm. Best player on the team. I've I seen him in game said. without LeBron. Yeah, without without him, y'all was on five. The job, the Pacers game, he didn't play, right? Mm-mm. Y'all won, right? Yeah, that's the first win that y'all had without him. He uh, right, yeah, I y'all think, won. They beat I the uh, the game before who the that. Pacers just beat the Clippers. They, they beat, beat the Clippers. The game so before that, I forget who it against, but that's the game. He also took the lead, uh, the franchise record for most threes in the season too. I cannot remember who that, that played, but it was like his first three too. It might have been. Oh, who, was second on, who did he pass? I forgot. It was uh, Nick Van Exel, maybe? And then it was but like But I Kobe. just remember it being like very low. It was like, a, it's like 180. Rev, relatively low number yeah. for the Lakers. You just assume that somebody Kobe hit Kobe was like number three with like 160 or something like that. Wow. I mean, the Lakers' best players in, in their history aren't shoot three-point shooters. Though. Yeah. Magic, Kobe, Shaq, Kareem. Yeah. But I just always thought this, it would be one role Gail player. Gail Goodrich. <laughs> like, I think KCP was high on that list. I, I thought it would have been Derek Fisher, personally. Mm. But he also – no, y'all – that was a 76ers, Mike. 76ers tweaking. Oh, Tyrese yeah, Maxey yeah, was yeah, trying Tyrese. to win that game. I don't know. He pulled it out, had. though. I'm tweaking. But, yeah, he was going crazy, Ty- Maxey. That's the game I needed him to make them threes. Mm-hmm. They really – bro, I think him and Toby shot 6 for 18 that game where they were shooting bad. Yeah. Yeah. But when he was going to the cup, yeah, y'all could not stop that. Where the Lakers are playing right now, I, none of those teams at the top want to play them in the first round. I know that they're gonna have somebody gonna have to bite the bullet and face them in that first round. I mean, maybe, maybe. But I think right now, I think the Lakers, the way they're playing, I think they're they gonna get in there. I feel the same way though. Yeah, they I hope we can get now. to the eighth seed at least. Yeah. I just don't want to be in a position where we gotta win two instead of just winning that one and being cool. So you're rooting against the Suns? Hell yeah! yeah. Right Any, now, right those now couple you have teams to play above two. it. It's some teams we just can't catch. But the team like the Suns and all them, the Mavericks, we mm-hmm. want to catch them. Okay. Yeah. Cause every little thing. It's going to be all right. Don't worry <laughs> about a thing. <laughs> the last thing we got out west Ooh. is the Golden State Warriors. You're not going to get respect to the 11th seed that's half a game yes, behind? Right. I did. Yep. Sheesh, that's so I, disrespectful. Because y'all know I got, I got my rockets. That's so disrespectful. Uh, you said the Warriors, right? I said Klay Thompson. Um, yeah. He's their biggest. This team sucks. <laughs> it, they do suck. They <laughs> do. Yeah, bro. 
it's, it's, it's a, it hasn't been the Splash Brothers all year. It's so hard to watch too. Yeah, I mean for the best for the our entire basically adulthood, we've watched this team be great. Yes, and now I'm watching them, and I'm watching Steph Curry, who's having a down month, and I'm like, he has no second offensive option on at the team all. at all. No, and you're just not gonna win a lot of basketball games like that. That's why I think that when they play against each other, almost inevitably with the Lakers, I'm going to take the Lakers in that. Because even if LeBron James and Anthony Davis are struggling, D'Angelo Russell's another option. Austin Reeves. Austin another. Reeves could be another then option. Then how come the Warriors beat them that last time they played? Uh, Anthony Davis got injured. He did. Yeah, he did. <laughs> but, I just, <laughs> but they don't need Anthony Davis because they get the rest of the rest of the I, me. No, I'm just joking. I don't know. I just, it's a We have watch. Jackson so Hayes now, now, too. I also went Clay Thompson. But you went I don't feel yeah. great about it. It I, feels like a cop out answer. I, I, yeah, because I put Andrew Wiggins, man, my, and I put oh, where that's, are that's you? Better. That's where better. did you go? Where where are you? Knock 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 knock. If they that Andrew Wiggins from that run makes this scene completely different. Completely, yeah, for sure. The not, that's they're not, they're that wasn't in, the Andrew Wiggins I know. It, that had to be a, a special my team card that he had right. played with that year. You're right. It was like a, a, right. a lunar eclipse year yeah. for, for Wiggins. Yeah. Every other year of his career is nothing like that one. <laughs> <laughs> he was an all-star starter. All-star starter. All -star Second best player on the championship Bleeping team. starter. That is that's crazy. That's crazy. And then it's just been down. <laughs> you know how many people bought that jersey? A bunch. Probably a lot. A lot, a lot of the K-pop fans got that Wiggins jersey right now. He probably got a whole nother salary, a decent little salary off that. Yeah. Yeah. Even though they get like 1% per sale. Damn. I'm j I don't know that oh. right number. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm just talking. Who you expect the mic? Uh, it was Clay you looking Thompson. looking at yourself? <laughs> you look good. Don't You look good. Thank you. I wish you to wear Air Max, but other than that, you look good. Right. I don't own any Air Max. You don't? No. When he said that, you, you said do what? Have Air Max. <laughs> nah, I do have Air Max. Oh. Yeah. Oh, you got the Air Max, yeah. That's probably my favorite Nike is Air Max. Really? You got some Air Max ninety sevens, no ninety fives. You got some ninety five. The black ones. He don't like know. The, I, I don't know about the models. I know I got a couple models, but I was gonna wear my. I was gonna wear my Air, uh, off white ones like you, but I wanted to wear my. Was palm, it De Desert Or? My Palm Angels from my boy A Square. Uh, I bought this. Yeah, I saw him comment on one of our shorts talking about the gloves. They was in my, <laughs> oh, they was in my stream talking about your gloves. <laughs> no, they was. What yeah. they say? I saw somebody saying say they wish they was you. Oh, they were saying it's hot in here. No, this because uh, I was like, man, Pia always trying to make a fashion statement. First the the sunglasses in the last studio, and now gloves. It was like, mm. <laughs> uh, rockets love. do rockets. Uh, the Houston Rockets. I got Jalen Green. The way he's been playing as of late without Shingoon. Even even with Shingun was there, uh, he can continue that up. Yeah, this seems really good. Give me Barry, baby. I got Fred Van Vliet. Give me Freddie. a man. Freddie has been incredible. He has the assists. He's been the perfect the point guard that this team could have ever went out and got. Mm -hmm. The leadership, the shot making. He got his shot back. Freddie V, baby. Him and Jalen Green had a game not so long ago. They they was like they they was on some other shit basically. Like mano y mano. <laughs> They went out for damn near 80 points together. Last night, I was a little afraid for them because I think going into halftime, ah. they, was, they was down. Ah. And that second half, they turned it all Stop the stressing way yourself, man. My Rockets got this. <laughs> they can get business with those bad teams. Yes. yes. And yeah, they was really coming out and just like putting belt to ass, early. as Pat Bev would say. Well, besides that game, but usually early. We not going to mention the Wizards being on the three-game streak? Yes. They beat the Bulls. Yes. Uh, they beat the, the Bulls. They know we're in the playoffs, but we got to mention them real quick. It was two quick. seconds left. The Rose has started to take off with his shot. I'm damn. You yeah. could have got two more dribbles, dog. Or threw the ball up to Kobe White. So that's tweaking. Um, also, DeMontis Sabonis set the record for most consecutive double-doubles in the NBA season. Yes. With to beat Kevin Love's record. 50, what, four, I think is the number? Best play on the Kings. Um, 54, yeah. <clears> and <throat> Kevin Love gave him a congratulations. So... Some crazy stuff. I would think that the record would be longer than 54. I would, too. With, like, Wilt and them? We've Somebody, had some right? Great, yeah, we've had some really great bigs in our league. Maybe they're not counting Wilt, because there's no way in hell. When you averaging You 50, had 30. 82 double-doubles on the season. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the, the only way this streak ends is if Sabonis gets injured in the first half. Getting 10 rebounds for DeMontis Sabonis is as easy as walking up and down the court. Yeah. And getting 10 points is, is as easy, too. The do only way this streak ends. Do y'all see anybody else in the league that could beat that Victor streak? Victor and <laughs> I don't know, brother. Don't be rebounder. No, he he will eventually. He be having really yeah. I think he will, especially when he get like a little bit more of that like muscle to him just from growing up. Like he'll be fine. 
Could Joel but, uh, or Jokic? That's what I'm saying. It's hard they? to think yeah, Jokic absolutely. can't do it. I mean, it's hard to think Joel and B can't do but it. But Jokic is very, very okay with not doing shit. He is. He yeah, is. They, they they can, but they Joel and B, I don't know if he can play enough games in the season. Damn. He got to hit 50. He got to hit that 54 mark. Yeah. He could get. Yeah. But he can. Like, yeah, they can for sure. They can. Yeah, but, I, I'm trying to think of any young bigs. At Maybe some Shang-Gun. point, you, you're going for Shang-Gun it. Shangoon could probably. I think Shangoon is probably going to be one of those next guys that could beat it. Absolutely. Because, I mean, that record stood for a very long time. Well, not yeah. very long time, but for a while. Kevin Love did it back in Minnesota. So that's what. Uh, almost a decade. I ago? feel like I had a, a lot of people had to be close, you know. Like I always see, like Anthony Davis would around like forty something or whatever. Like on the season, it's like Kevin for to know that the number is fifty four is kind of crazy. He was literally just out there getting thirty and twenty games. Like he was so damn good, and that's when he was playing with his back to the basket too. Like you type in Demontis Sabonis, first in a cop pop up his dad. Why? Because his dad a legend. But come on, man. Uh yeah, this season he's had six games where he has less than ten rebounds, and two of those games was nine rebounds. You know, so he's right there. His season high of rebounds in the game. Do y'all remember what it was? Twenty two, twenty five. It was twenty six. Mm. Twenty six rebound game. Who was mm. that against the uh, Grizz? I would say Hornets. The Grizz. He oh, had yeah, Jared Jackson wasn't getting shit. Or 20 points, Jameson. 26 rebounds, 5 assists on 90% shooter. 90% shooter. Damn. He was doing Jaren like that? Like when was we Jaren eventually – Maybe Jaren wasn't playing. We're going to have like our um, All-NBA award, award show. It's going to be hard not to have a bonus on the All-NBA team. Yeah. He deserves – You know what's crazy? How did Andre Drummond never ne- like break that record? He had the opportunity and eight he points. Could be- <laughs> yeah, ten <laughs> points is kind of tough sometimes for a brother like Drummond. Let me look at my fantasy baseball team real quick. <sighs> yeah, y'all missed out on. I'm actually happy y'all not in it though. I wouldn't. I, I don't know if I could be in fantasy. I mean, I always join it with y'all, but I just not engaged fantasy into baseball it. Fantasy it, I wouldn't have known what I was doing at all. I would have hey, just picked players I like. Honestly. I like. I like baseball. I know players of baseball, but fantasy is just so different that I believe that I didn't draft. I would have picked Alex Verdugo in my second pick. But I would have oh, yeah. even, even know him, could have found him in the, in the free agency <laughs> the way pool. After. I wouldn't have known who I was drafting. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can just go by the the order. Yeah, but that's kind of boring. That you would have as well just not be in the draft. Yeah. You would have pitchers first. Yeah. So but it was like, cool. Football where you don't draft like QBs first. It's, no, you actually could take a pitcher first, but what's the most valuable? I mean, it's got to be like hitting, right? Yeah, hitting is more valuable than pitching. Um, but like one of the top projected people was a pitcher in the top ten, so it's possible because we're talking. Who was it again? Spencer Strider. Spencer Strider. Wow. What uh, team he played for? I don't even know who that is. Uh, the Braves. Braves. Um, thick as hell. Um, <laughs> I love me one of them big pitchers. No. He ain't no Super super big, but he's strong, stocky. Wait, wait, why why are you saying M- it like that? Mustache. Oh, because he's not he's not pants. he's not Bartello Cologne. Like I'll he's not CC big. Yeah, he's not CC Sabathia, right? CC big up there. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it was it was fun though. Even though I don't know anybody in there other than Pierre and Terrence. Mm. Um, but that's not true. I know some of the names. That, you know yeah. Googs? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. But it's some of Terrence homies. Um, one of them was that raw with you the other night or last night. I forgot. I don't oh, know which one Drake it was. Terrence did Trace? say somebody was pulling up. How was that? How was that experience watching another sport live? It's always it's fun. Uh, somebody had tweeted me and said like, "What's more exciting, um, a good raw sh- like a good wrestling show or like a playoff type atmosphere?" Because he said he feels like the atmospheres are kind of close. Oh. And I was like, I've never been to a playoff game, mm. so I wouldn't be able to tell. But like the atmosphere in like that arena was crazy, and it started off with Dwayne being there. So like. Immediately, okay. There's just like that electricity in the building. Compare that to Denver ring ceremony, which was better. Oh shit! Because that's not a playoff, but that's like as hype as you can get. We just won a goddamn championship. The uh, fact that you're thinking is very interesting, though, because Monday Night Raw is every week. Yes. Championship ring ceremonies is once a year. Playoff series is like you know what I'm saying. But wrestling fans show up. That, yeah, no. that was fifteen thousand people in that arena. Yeah. And they was all loud, chanting, engaged. It was. Did you get to see Rhea? I did. I saw it. I didn't watch, but yeah. I, I read her up because I follow a few wrestling yeah. accounts where she said, I can post anything on the, on yeah. the internet and freaks go crazy for it. Yes. Because Becky had told her, like, I have to bust my ass in this ring in order to get to where I'm at. And all you have to do is post your ass on the internet. And then <laughs> and Rhea said, yeah, I could post my ass on the internet. 
and these freaks go crazy about it. I ain't got to wrestle here every oh, night so, like So you. she didn't say freaks in a derogatory way, or think, did she? I think she was meaning it. I think she was calling us freaks. Damn. So I think it was a heel thing. She's the heel. Ah, she was okay. Us so I don't know enough. Yeah, okay. she was calling us freaks. It makes she's all black and everything. Yeah. I should have kind of assumed that she was heel. But Dwayne was. Are you one of those freaks? He said us. Oh, okay. He did say us. <laughs> Dwayne was so crazy at the end, though. That was so fun. And it's like they set it up perfectly to where, like, he could do his little ending where he's beating Cody's ass. He's talking shit to Chicago. And then they cut the camera. Is he heel? Yeah, he's oh, heel wow. now. But, like, the ability to get him out was beautiful. They get, You could see his truck mm. in the back of the camera. Like, you could tell that when that camera cut off, everybody waited to see if there was dark matches. They didn't say nothing. Mm -hmm. um, what's her name? Samantha. Samantha didn't uh, tell us to leave yet mm -hmm. or, like, tell us goodnight. They waited, like, three or four minutes, and Dwayne was gone. So yeah. they made it to where he can get out comfortably mm -hmm. without the whole the whole arena being out there waiting on him. Was this in Rosemont or DC? Yeah, Rosemont. Okay. So, like, usually fans wait for dark matches. Was then, there dark matches last nope. night? Samantha eventually. Wow. After a few minutes, Samantha was like, okay, guys, good night. Mm -hmm. Oh, drive home safely. I, they were really... Try to make sure Dwayne got out comfortably without, because when Bad Bunny was there, oh man, they got him. They it caught him crazy. in the park. They caught. So Damn. it took one girl to, to be see. Like, oh, I saw that clip. Yeah, I did some see girl that was clip. like, "Oh my God, that's Bad Bunny!" Yeah. And the whole everybody heard it, and everybody found out what car it was, wow. and they all was standing outside of it with their phones. And I'm just like, man, mm. y'all can't just let these people just go. I saw a TikTok about. Um, I don't know if this translates to wrestling. But Dwayne Wade has a no loss. A uh, Dwayne Wade, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has a no loss policy in his contracts. And again, I don't know if that matters in WWE, but like with his film, mm. if he's in a fight scene, he cannot die in the fight scene unless oh, wow. he's won the battle. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you win and then, oh no, the world is collapsing around me. Yeah. Um. But he has a no. He got the ultimate character buff. Yes. He has plot armor in yeah. every single movie. What? Yes. That's crazy. Is it, that's so ridiculous. And it's crazy because he's... But now knowing that any rock movie I've ever seen, I ain't seen a lot of them, there's no suspense anymore because I know it's in the contract. I did not know that. Unless he's like, this the one movie that we're going to surprise the world. Mm -hmm. I'm going to die in the first seven minutes. Can you imagine being that much a big of a movie starter where you can control every aspect of the movie? Yeah. I mean... I told you about that stuff where I think it was Tom Cruise, how like they have to have it to where he looks the same height as everybody he's next to. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's Tom like, Cruise is my height. <laughs> yes. But in the movies, you would think he, he was with uh, Henry Cavill, uh, super, old Superman, mm. in that one movie, um, uh, Mission Impossible. How do they make that work? There's a lot of camera stuff. A yeah. lot of camera. They probably Sometimes build, like the little boxes. Yeah. yeah. Um, he, Henry Cavill, I don't know how tall Henry Cavill is, but that's a big mofo. They said, and um, it was hand in hand. With like, the run the scenes, they have like, he'll be running on a platform and somebody will be running on a lower one so it looks like they're the same height. If y'all were in the movie, would y'all have a stunt double or would y'all yes. do y'all own stunts? I mean, we talk an action movie? Yeah. Absolutely. That Tom Cruise is crazy. He's like almost 60 and he's jumping out of planes for movies. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good on all of that. <laughs> Anything that can cause bodily harm, I'm trying to avoid at all costs. I've seen a post lately and it was like, how long did it take you to realize that this was like... In the movie, I think it was Friday, uh, next Friday. Next yeah. Friday, Could you Craig be? Craig had a stunt double <laughs> for when they had slapped him on the ass. He was uh, yeah. like, "You're not gonna touch my ass." Could Before you, I, I had I didn't know that that wasn't um what's her name Zendaya Zendaya that she had a stunt double for. Oh, a lot I, of I never scenes. watched the show. Yeah, oh, you haven't? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there was a few scenes where she had to like run through a city and like she was jumping over gates and everything. I didn't know that wasn't Zendaya. I thought it was actually her. See, my thing Most is, of them have stunt doubles. My thing... Like, a rare breed is people that's doing all their stuff. Is when it's the, the clearly obvious fake double, or oh, like yeah, the yeah. fake the, one. That's a cheap movie type shit. Yeah. I like when it be like type of shit. Yeah. Like, if you watch Fresh Prince, sometimes you'll see Jazz get thrown out. It's not Jazz. Not even close to him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Who is this light skin through? Because <laughs> that's, that's definitely not Jazz and Jeff. Uh, but no, I, I like all that type of stuff. Could you do a movie? You got to do one of them scenes. You'll be able to be professional. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> I think mentally I just wouldn't I wouldn't think of it as not anything more than work. I saw a video. It might have been about Vice years and years ago, like showing the process of how they film that type of scene. It's very interesting to make sure that obviously everybody feels very comfortable yeah. and, and everything. Um, and the equipment that they use yeah. is very interesting too. I what think it was Vice. Because, I mean, obviously they're not 
yeah. getting it on. No, no, I know. But it's like they they wear certain things and they're, they're, they're like, really? No, no, no. <laughs> like, I I'm, have I ever dreaming to have a scene in a movie like that all this time? <laughs> I was curious what real. equipment he was talking about. Uh, That's all. <laughs> it's just equipment for, for both of them where yeah. like there's no Skin real again. contact. Yeah. Um, you know how the human body is. Even yeah. if you're not trying to do something, you might get aroused. And yes. like, even if that happens, there's no, there's no way the other person there's can the, feel it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? It's just a bunch of different the, stuff. Ah, that took away all, all, all my interest. <laughs> <laughs> You've been there. No, never. Mind. Actually, I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> Hell no. Whoa. I'm not gonna do that. No, I was gonna talk about because the waxing stuff. Oh. Like that is one of those scenarios where you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, when I first went to get waxed, this was years ago, um, the lady said, like, the human body is a human body. Whatever happens, happens. Don't feel bad. I mean, I was fine. But obviously, that means that she's in her mm. profession. There's been times where she was waxing people. Absolutely. And things happen. It's never happened you know to me. I don't even know. I don't even know how you could even it's get in the It's painful. I right. doesn't feel good. I'm that's just, why I, well, some men like pain. I guess that's true. <laughs> no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> he went from laughing to no. <laughs> now, we know what his thing is. <laughs> uh, what's his thing? We know what his thing is. Oh, <laughs> oh, is he still on it? Oh, I don't know. I just be talking. Oh, <laughs> just be talking. have y'all seen that um that Nickelodeon documentary? I think my, mom, I hey, my mom was just telling me about that, and that shocked me because I walked into the house. She's like, "You used to watch all those shows, didn't you?" She's like, it's some awful things. It's like, you you should watch That's it. That's how you portray your mom, by the way. <laughs> she did. You like, do that every time. <laughs> she she was telling me, like, I should probably watch it because she knows I watched all them shows. And I was like, yeah, I heard about it, but I ain't really, like, tuned in yet. I've only seen clips. You got to watch it, man. I seen uh, Drake. What is it on? Max. Okay, bet. I seen. Um, Drake Bell. Yeah, he had posted something about it. And, like, I was looking at the comments. Bro, the Nancy Classified crew made fun of him. I saw that. Yes. Okay, I'm not, yeah, I'm I have to watch it. They made fun of like him? Like, now, now, like, they came out, and then they made a joke on Instagram Live oh, poking wow. fun at this situation. We talk about SA. We talk yeah. about a bunch of very serious stuff. You talking about stuff. after the after documentary? After it came out. Like, they oh, okay. watched the doc and went on Instagram Live oh, and crazy. made jokes. And it's just, like, that's crazy. crazy stuff. Was it Ned and the girl? It was Ned for sure on Ned. camera. People were behind him. I don't know. It probably oh. was the, the main uh, female protagonist. I forget her name. Her um, name was... I, remember the I girl, don't know. The her cook, cookie was the other guy. Cookie. I know Cookie, but um, I don't. I don't watch this. So no, nah, not Mary. I feel like I, it wasn't Mary. I, I feel like it wasn't Mary. It's gonna make me mad now. Yeah. Either way, um, I recommend people watching it because it's yes, yeah, it's, it's our childhood basically. Yeah. Like a lot of shows we watched growing up. It's like damn, Amanda show one like you know what I'm saying. It wasn't all sunshine and roses, and that's just I guess Hollywood slash the business when you have child actors. Unfortunately, yes, yeah, sad that that's. Stuff that ha- does happen, yeah, or at least did. No, hopefully none of that shit's happening hey, now. Does did y'all see the little interview that the dude they was talking? They was accused. Part of this accused stuff. He did like an interview. Oh, Dan oh, Snyder sat yeah. down with the dude from um, iCarly, the black. Homie. Yeah, um, what's like, his what name? Is, what the hell is it? That he the having a, yeah. Oh, what is his name, Mike? What oh, iCarly, the black dude that worked at the smoothie shop. Um, he be having the bagels on the I stick. Know but the I wrong know exactly way. what you're talking about. I can't remember his, I can't remember his, his real name. No, his, can, his name in the show. It doesn't matter. But yeah, he sat down and did like, like a 20 minute what interview. What is his interview? Like, KB interview me about yeah. Ned. The girl in Ned is called, you, her name is Jennifer. Jennifer. I'll look up you the, the other guy's somebody name. That you don't Tebow. 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 Shout out to Tebow. Shout out to I know it's some weird nickname. Yeah. But yeah, he sat down like three days after the documentary came out. And basically said a bunch of nothing for two, 20 minutes. I owe people an apology. That is the bare minimum. I owe some people an apology. You know what you did on that set? And now it's a bunch of clips resurfacing of like... Ariana Grande. Yeah, stuff would've, behind yeah. the scenes that were happening. It's just bad, man. It's just bad. Um, y'all got me really yeah, curious. Yeah, and that's why every time I see a child actor <clears throat> that has gone through trials and tribulations as they hit adulthood, I always want to give them benefit of the doubt. Because the things are in the in the industry is so crazy when you get a child actor. Yeah. Like, even Amanda Bynes now. Have y'all seen her? Like, mm-hmm. you know, I'm like, I, I, I pray for her and hope that she ends up getting help if she needs help. I, I can't even say if she needs help, but I've seen the, the TikToks and stuff. And, like, you know, she was on the set of these shows, these, sh- yeah. these exact shows that are referenced in this. She's Sad. not even just on the set. She's a star of these shows. So who knows? Mm-hmm. Um, but... 
such a I feel so out of the loop. Pretty girl. Because, like, I, I know all that these shows, gal. but I yeah. haven't watched the documentary, so I don't really know, like, the, all the undercover stuff. But mm-hmm. <sighs> I don't know. Makes I see, you think. Because you know it's not perfect. You know Hollywood and all that type of stuff. You know it's, it's so got, like, weird. No, nobody perfect. It is Especially so weird. Especially when it comes to business. There. People would do, like, the corrupt stuff and all that. So it's kind of the and this is stuff, early 2000s the corrupt stuff too. is one thing. This shit is just it's weird. like 92,000. We it's keep even. hearing weird shit yeah. with this Hollywood stuff. Mm-hmm. Stop asking me, am I moving? I'm staying my ass. Here. <laughs> yes. What am I moving to? I don't yeah. want no parts of that weird they, ass activity. G Herbo yeah. say he moving back to Chicago. Yeah, I don't do all that. He say he can't get no no Philly or no beef out of L.A. I don't especially do, late I don't at do night. None of that freaky deaky ass weird ass shit. I'm not into none of that. I like to play the game yeah. and go shopping. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not into all of that weird ass shit. I just seen That's some same. dude on Twitter who they were saying he he uh he snuck onto Epstein Island. Did y'all see that? No. No. Yeah. Like uh he vlogged like, it. He vlogged. I was gonna say like one of them content creators that vlog yeah. and be like, I went to Epstein Island, like yeah. that type of stuff. Uh huh. Those videos kinda be crazy to me. I never really click on them. Even get the clearance to get there. But yeah, it'd be it'd be that type of stuff. I guess I don't know enough about. Or it'd be like I went to I went to this island full of venomous well, snakes. Apparently, you what can the go hell is the, you even? You doing can go that? to the Virgin Islands. And yeah. You can go into the the water or whatever, and then if you go in the water, you can technically go over there. It's going to have a bunch of no trespass and different things like that. But he he went on there and ran up to the thing and ran back down and all of this. He ain't the first, but he like really vlogged the experience. So a part of it feel fake, but it's still it was the Epstein Island though. But y'all see that uh, story of the dude that snuck on the plane this week? No, no. How do you sneak on the plane? Okay, yeah. he, so he got through TSA. Um, first of all, he had a he had a ticket. For Not a, the story I like as much as we travel. <laughs> but okay. No facts. Um, he had a ticket to fly home to Dallas. He was in some place, let's say Utah. I think it, it was one of those obscure places. What the hell is this dude doing? I'll be thinking God every time I see these that we don't like the story where that person had diarrhea on it. Like I'm oh like, my God. Oh, yeah. Thank Bro, God. I seen his post oh real God. quick too. It's just like airports are not a real place. He's like, you telling me at seven in the morning it's three hundred people trying to get back to Chicago <laughs> from Utah. <laughs> and it's just like all that type of stuff. Five in the morning, somebody got he got some vodka. Y'all don't think that Other though. Every time y'all see, oh, we have to do an emergency landing. We have to do this. It's yeah, a Karen no, on there. I'll be like, bro, thank I always, goodness. whenever we land, I'm like, thank God. Yeah. Because yeah. the only time I had an experience is I told y'all, like one of the last times I went to New York, is that we were touching down on the runway, and then the pilot just sped back up, and we took back oh, off. Oh, yeah, I did see that. Scariest did fucking that. thing of my life. I don't know. Nobody sat on the intercom for like 10 minutes, so we just flying. I'm like, what is happening? Like, I'm thinking that this is it's it's over. I, I the the pilot then went rogue. Because she went back into the fucking no. Air. The pilot <laughs> might have went rogue. Like we, I don't uh, know what's uh, going on. Yeah. Uh, you you know like the Malaysia um flight that oh, went that missing a few years yeah. ago. Like the they pilot still went rogue. Trying to find evidence of that flight. And there was it's a still- documentary about it that I watched recently. Um, it took like ten minutes for them to tell us what the hell was going on. And what happened was it was just like a fire on the runway. That if we would have stayed on that runway. It might have been conflicting. So we took back off, waited for them to get rid of the fire, and then we landed again. But it took them so long to tell us. Like, everybody's looking on each other at the plane. Like, when shit like that happens, do you know the first thing I always look at? What's that? The flight attendants. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I feel that. I ain't had no eye. No if eye, they no are eye. calm and collected, I am calm and collected. Because best believe if some shit going up, they ass is not going to be talking about, you want a refill? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no, back, back to the story of the guy. So he was, he was flying standby yeah. back home. He got to his flight, his gate, there was no seats to get back home to Chicago. So what he did was he walked to another terminal, saw one that was like, again, let's just say Chicago, flying home to Chicago. He waited and saw somebody pull out their um, boarding pass on their phone. And he snapped the picture of their boarding pass. And that was enough for him to scan his way through. And he waited in, in, the, um, in, in the, the, bathroom? the bathroom until the boarding doors closed. And they came out hoping that there was going to be an open seat. Yeah. So he boarded a flight for a different airline without mm-hmm. tickets or anything. And there was no more seats. So now the flight attendant is like, this guy's just standing up. What's going on? Um, In the air? No, they didn't get up yet because uh. he came out before. He mm-hmm. just came out when the door closed and locked. Yeah. Um, so they're taxiing. And they're like, take your seat. Like, where, where, where's your seat? And then he's like faking like, oh, I think I'm supposed to be here. And they see that that's not his name. That's some woman's name. And boom, boom, boom. So it's like an immediate... Like risk, we don't know this dude. What? How the hell he get here? Right. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, they get him off the plane, and he's about to be on no fly list for the rest of his goddamn life. And he's probably gonna like really serve some time just because he was impatient and couldn't wait to the next flight home. It's That's crazy. crazy. Did you, there was also another video recently where a dude got caught 
when they were taxiing, he was vaping in the bathroom. Or I think they had just took no, off. No, I don't even think, I think he they had just I think I seen that same. I don't even think he was in the bathroom. I think he was doing that shit in his seat. No, they were in the bathroom. I they, saw like, a girl vaping. I yeah, saw girl in the was, seat. But like this dude was in the bathroom and he was smoking weed. <laughs> and like they waited for him to come well, out. How dumb can he be, bro? Oh no, no, it wasn't weed, it was a cigarette, I think. I think either it was way. A cigarette. Either way. And like they called him and he was like, they were like, Well, were you smoking? And then the smoke's coming out the door. And, and he he's like, like no. no. Yeah. <laughs> and so they had to land. Hey, I would want to beat that dude ass, bro. Yes. The last thing I need on my flight is any level of anxiety. Yes. If I see or smell any smoke, I'm gonna go into a full fucking panic. Cause I don't know, I don't trust yeah. planes in general. I'm mean, not dude, cause I get on them. But like to an extent, I don't know how planes work. Yes. So if I hear or smell smoke, I'm immediately thinking the worst case scenario. And do you know how much of an inconvenience you are to the whole flight? We have to land. People got to land. Yeah. We have to land again. And now we got to. I don't know if they got to take everybody off. Because they got to take everybody so off. Crazy, now we bro. all got to get off. Yeah. And then we got to reboard. I remember it, that happened to us in LA once. I feel like I'm always about like reboard. the wing. You were there too. I'm pretty sure. Or maybe that was coming back from Vegas the time you weren't there. We're on the on the taxi thing. We're like speeding up to take off and we never took off. And we went back to the gate. They said the engine never got to the power that we wanted. So we had to No, that was me. You I were there too. So we had to we went on to a different plane. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. And I was just like, Thank God. I don't crazy. care about the extra like, hour yeah, waiting. Yeah. Thank God. Deboard yeah, us, like, please. Please, yeah. if that engine ain't working, please don't do <laughs> please that. Please deboard us. Because oh. I remember one time. We I was on there like, don't ever have me on a plane and you ain't sure about this engine. <laughs> okay. That made me feel very comfortable, though, yeah. too, that they, they were able to recognize yeah, it before. Yeah. They be on their shit, though. Yeah. I remember one time we was leaving San Francisco and, like, the plane was taking off, but it didn't feel powerful. Yes. And, over, like, and we were over the water? Yes. And we were oh, just, my God. And we were just hovering over the water. It was a night flight, yes. too, and I'm like, I can't sleep or nothing. And like, I was just, like, that I water's kind of close. <laughs> but, then, <laughs> was, but then we ended up slowly getting up, and then we ended up like just crew. It was a smooth flight. It home. was a smooth Very flight. Very smooth flight. Yes. But it just didn't take off as powerful as you used to. Because you can to. hear the engines. engines. Yes. And this one never hit. And sometimes you hear it, and then once yes. you get the cruise now, too, you hear it like chill. This, this one was one, in chill mode the yes. whole time. And then it was being so low to that water for so long. It's scary just as hell, bro. But I, we had a flight from LA, the red eye. That was the most turbulence I ever felt. That, that was a Oh, whole, that would piss me off on a red eye, bro. Yeah. You was on there. I was there. We was we did a uh mobile one. Oh. Remember we went to that game with Mass D. And then we left right after. Oh, then that would, yeah, that definitely would piss me off because Matt Steves already had me on 10 anxiety wise talking oh my about God. other shit. We in a car, Matt Steves. You see that plane that went down, bro? Our flight is in four <laughs> hours. What yeah. are you talking about, bro? <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> That's my guy, though. I just seen him the other day. Shout yeah, out, shout, like, out and all stuff. shout out to him. Shout out to him. That we, was a great, that was a great eye value. I would not have noticed him walking past us. My boy. Thank y'all so much for watching or listening to this episode of Numbers on the Board. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like on the episode. Hopefully none of them finna get on a plane. Right, yeah, because we just messed up they whole Tay on a plane fault. right now. My fault. We good. You're going to be fine. Tr trust. Trust. Um, leave a like, subscribe, and we will see y'all in a few days. Peace. Peace.